Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It is 9.31 on Thursday, February 24th. I'd like to call the City of Tallahassee uh, CRA meeting to order. Welcome everybody that's here. We've got a full crowd. We're going to make sure everybody has an opportunity to speak on the items that they're interested in. Colleagues, we're going to have a great day today between the CRA meeting and the Blueprint meeting this afternoon. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get this meeting started. Uh, Mr. Director, do we have any agenda modifications? No, Mr. Chair. All right, we're under presentations 3.01, the Downtown District Development Review Commission update by the DRC Chair, Mr. Kyle Phelps. <clears throat> Kyle, thanks again for everything that you do. Certainly do appreciate it. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, good morning. Thank you. Um, my name is Kyle Phelps. I'm currently the Chief Banking Officer with Prime Meridian Bank. Also now have the honor of serving as the Downtown Redevelopment Commission Chair for the CRA. Uh, quick update, we had our February 1st meeting. The only item we had in front of us at this meeting was a request uh, for a $290,000 grant from Short Hike LLC doing business as Amicus Brewing. I believe I'm saying that correctly. Um, and so they're, what they're looking to do is they're looking to renovate the old city waterworks um, building downtown. The total uh, cost for, for renovating this site is $1.2 million roughly. Again, the request for the grant was 297. After review of the request, uh, we are making the recommendation to the CRA to fund this grant under the following conditions, uh, that their lender, uh, who in this case would be Smart Bank Funds, and uh, that must be approved and verified prior to uh, this grant being approved, that the Tallahassee Historic Property Grant, roughly $41,000, must be approved, and additional funding needs to, uh, to complete this project is roughly about $200,000 uh, be secured and verified as well, and that the uh, funding of this grant be given at CO, which is standard practice for these type of grants. So that's uh, the February 1st meeting, what we had in front of us. I know that we're gonna provide a lot more detail than what I'm providing here, but that's a quick update, and any questions you guys might have, of course, I can answer them now or be available to get through. Great, any questions for Mr. Phelps? You're the man. Thank okay. you very much. Appreciate it. We're on 3.02 presentations. Greater Frenchtown Southside Citizens Advisory Committee update by the GFS CAC Chair, Dr. Minji Kim. Dr. Kim, I'm here. See you. Thanks for joining us. Good to see um, everyone. Um, by the way, on a separate for... note, I actually met one of your students yesterday that said that you are their favorite professor. <laughs> oh, I just oh, thought I would. I'm pass very that happy along. to hear that. Um, whoever whoever that was gets an A. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Kim, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for having me, uh, and good morning, board members. Um, and thank you for this opportunity to update you on the last CAC meeting. Um, and um, this, um, our last meeting took place on January 10th, and we did not meet for February. So uh, we had a really light agenda. The, um, so we elected the chair and vice chair. So I uh, myself would be the chair until um, September 30th of this year. And then Mr. Walter McDonald will be the vice chair of the CAC, um, of Greater Frenchtown Southside CAC until September 30th of this year. Um, beyond that, we only had one major item on our uh, on the table, which was the request by the FNIA, the Frenchtown Neighborhood Improvement Association, for the CRA to donate the Heritage Hub building that the FNIA currently rents from the CRA for $10 per year. So we had a very constructive conversation among the CAC members with CRA staff as well as FNIA. We discussed the pros and cons and of the donation and weighed the benefits and also the cost of our potential options. We also reviewed the business plan of FNIA and the financial viabilities of FNIA's various initiatives. We also dis discussed the distributional equity of CRA assistance among nonprofits and community organizations within the district. So through this constructive conversation, uh, we have come to understand that the intent of the FNIA request was to actually seek maximum flexibility and control over the building rather than the actual ownership. So um, FNI had plans for um, possible expansion as well as growth and wanted to make sure that the, that that expansion, their plan, can go as smoothly and without bureaucracy as possible. 
So we, um, through this conversation, we came to a consensus that such need can be satisfied by entering into a renewed 10-year agreement with FNIA with um, ma maximum flexibility um, ensured through um, negotiating the, the terms of the agreement. So with that, the CAC um, recommends the board to adapt the, adopt the, the staff recommendation to enter into a 10-year agreement um, with the terms renegotiated. However, um, so that, that was the CRA, uh, CAC discussion, uh, but I did want to add one point as the, and, and this is coming to, from me as the chair, we hadn't had a chance to discuss with the CRA, CRA, CAC members, but I uh, just wanted to make sure that if FNIA, uh, for you to consider, um, if FNIA makes real improvements to the property that cannot be taken when they, you know, what, what, when the time comes and when they have to leave the building, if, if for example, they had expanded the, the building and can't take away, um, take it with them, I do want to make sure that um, their equity investments can be compensated in some, some sense um, and through the negotiated terms of the agreement. So um, I, I just wanted to throw that out there for your um, additional consideration and potentially modify the CRA um, staff recommendation. So that's, that's all I have for, for today, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Dr. Kim, thank you. Any questions for Dr. Kim? Commissioner Porter. Thank you, Dr. Kim. And we can discuss this more when the item comes up. Mm -hmm. Is that something that you have a template for or examples of other communities where that's been done? Um, I do not have a template, but I have seen this being done elsewhere. So I could definitely um, look into some examples if um, that would be helpful. I, did have, I didn't have a chance to speak with um, Lou, so I don't know the, the legal ramifications and, and sort of um, the, the possible boundaries. However, I did have a brief conversation with um, Sherry and it seems like uh, this is something that could potentially be worked out. So I, I, I don't think this is out of bounds of uh, you know, what, what is being practiced on the ground. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Dr. Kim, one more time for the record. What is the amended recommendation coming from the CAC? So um, not necessarily amended. The CAC recommended um, adopting the staff recommendation, which right. was to enter into a 10-year agreement with um, negotiated terms. I, as a, uh, the chair, is throwing in that negotiated term, uh, within that negotiated terms, make sure uh, it, whether it be possible to make sure that any equity investments that FNIA makes that cannot be taken away be compensated at, when they leave the building. Ah, okay. Mr. Mayor. Sure. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. I, I would have no problem uh, considering that, mm -hmm. Dr. Kim, but I don't know that it's appropriate for us today without legal advice from our attorneys and knowing if that is possible for mm -hmm. us to take action on it today, coming just from you as right. chair. Uh, and so I, I guess I would ask our attorney, Mr. Norvell, what would be our position in that respect? Mr. Norvell. Uh, so uh, Commissioner, the, the proposal in front of you is to approve the 10-year extension. Right. At this point, as I understand it, it would be speculative as to what those improvements are, and we don't know what, what they are. What the proposal is, is that this lease gives uh, the tenant the flexibility that if they request to make an improvement, that, uh, that, that CRA will, will grant it if it's reasonable. My recommendation to you would be, as, as those come up, if that's going to be a substantial improvement to the property that adds value to the CRA, why don't we take it up when those improvements come up as opposed to doing it speculatively today? Sure. I would feel more comfortable with, with that position. I think that <coughs> accomplishes both goals. Yes. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Any other questions? Dr. Kim, thank you very much. Thank you. Certainly thank appreciate you, it. We're on item number 13.03. The update of the Lemoyne Arts Center Gallery Tourist Development Tax Project Grant, Mr. Kraft, President. 13 or 3? 3. Yeah, 3.03. Yeah, you said 13. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those long days. Day. Yeah. Here we go. Here we go. 3.03. <laughs> hey, thanks for joining us, y'all. We appreciate it. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yep. Um, I'm Paul Kraft. I am president of the Lemoyne Art Foundation, doing business as Lemoyne Arts. Um, this is very weird for me. This is the first time I've been before y'all when I wasn't asking for something. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, we are pleased to um, update you, letting you know that million dollars that you granted to us last year 
um, was spent two days earlier, or two days later, my wife says I'm good at that, um, we put the entire proceeds of that grant along with $300,000 of additional funding and purchase of the building next door. So we thank you for that. I also am very pleased to uh, introduce you to Ms. Arielle Raft, who is our new executive director as of our last board meeting. Um, she's Great. not exactly new. Um, she joined us exactly a year ago in about a week. Um, and basically we came on as operations director and she has handled the business end of managing this grant and the funds pretty much from the get-go. So I give you R.L. Raft, and again, I thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, commissioners. Thank you, Mayor Daly. Um, I am so pleased to be here today, and it is my first time in this chamber, so thank you for welcoming me. Um, so I'm pleased to um, give this report to thank the CRA for the million dollar grant and to show you how um, we have used it and let you know about our um, plans and progress. So this first slide here uh, shows the Lemoyne Art Gallery and our expanded presence on North Gadsden Street. Um, the gallery is on the left and just to the right is our new education building. Thank you. Oh, is this me? Oh, hi there. All right. Um, so thank you for the million dollars. And um, we have uh, put it directly into the new education building. Uh, the purchase price of the building was $1.3 million. So we took the grant plus $300,000 of donated funds from our capital campaign. And we were able to purchase the building outright without um, securing any mortgage. We don't have any debt related to this building. Our capital campaign is aggressive and successful. Um, th these numbers here show our January 31st um, uh, benchmarks that we met. Um, we had raised $959,544, um, and so we, were, we are on set to match dollar for dollar the CRA grant. Since this uh, report, um, in the time of February 1st through yesterday, uh, we have um, received over $20,000 from an additional 23 donors. That brings us up to 130 donors and it brings our total fundraising to $980,000. So we are within $20,000 now of matching dollar for dollar the CRA grant that we've received. Um, and we are in really good shape for exceeding our fundraising goals. Um, our fundraising campaign is chaired by Mrs. Paula Fortunas and Paula is present today. If you have any specific fundraising questions, um, she'll really be happy to entertain uh, those questions at the conclusion of this presentation. Uh, we have engaged Riley Palmer Construction Company as our general contractor and um, hired Barnett Franzak, Barlow and Schuler Architects um, and Kimley Horn for designing the building and the landscaping. Um, and we're working with Tomahawk Engineering for the mechanical and electrical engineering. It's a great team. Um, we've really enjoyed working with them so far. Um, and uh, we are moving forward with a healthy fundraising campaign, a growing roster of donors. And I'd like to share um, the plans that we have here. We've finalized our floor plans for the new building. Um, the changes here uh, convert the law offices uh, that are there in the building to studio classrooms. Um, a nice large event space, and of course storage for our permanent collection. We're working with Kimley Horn to expand and improve our outdoor event space. Um, it, we're currently finalizing plans for the program and event space, including expansion of our kiln complex, um, revitalizing our gazebo, uh, it, um, this plan here will allow us to expand our ceramics workshops um, and 
we're really excited about that because it'll give us a regional reach and um, bring people in from out of town. So in summary, uh, we have shown a successful track record and we have a successful future. Uh, we've acquired the two-story building. It's 6,264 square feet. Um, we incurred no debt and uh, we're designing modern accessible classrooms and studios. Um, we're providing secure climate controlled space for our permanent art collection. We are expanding our outdoor program space and improving accessibility. Plus we're enabling a greater reach for out of town guests. We're very excited about this. Thank you to the CRA uh, for making this possible. Your investment in Lemoyne Arts is making a lasting and positive impact on the greater Tallahassee community. Thank you very much. Great presentation. Y'all are doing a fantastic job. Thank you so much. And I think I speak for everybody. We're really excited for Arts in the Park coming up this spring. Any questions or comments on the presentation? We're all set. Thank you very much. Great Thank job. You. Ladies and gentlemen, we're on the consent agenda. Do we have any public comments on consent? Uh, Mr. Chair, yes, we do at this time for agenda items. We do have 12 speaker cards. At we're, going, we're going to take public comment on the items as we hit the items, just on consent. Do we have any public comment on the consent agenda, which is approval of the minutes? We do not. Excellent. All move right. Consent, Mr. Mayor. It's been properly moved by the Mayor Pro Tem to move Second. the consent agenda. Seconded by Commissioner Porter. Any other comments? Seeing none. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, passes unanimously 5-0. And I'm sorry, I should have made myself more clear that we'll just take public comment on the items as we get to them. Okay, yes, sir. All right. So we are on item 7.01, the Frenchtown Neighborhood Improvement Association request for CRA property located at 524 North Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard. Uh, Mr. Cox, Sherry? Uh, Sherry will be uh, doing a presentation on Okay. Ms. Curtis, thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Good morning, uh, Chair and Board Members. 7.01 is the Frenchtown Neighborhood Improvement Association request for a donation of the CRA-owned property located at 524 North Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard. The property has been leased by FNIA under, a two, under uh, two three year leases since 2016 to operate the Frenchtown Farmers Market and Kitchen Share Program. The city's real estate office has valued the property at an estimated value of $324,000. FNIA currently has three functioning programs <clears throat> under their Heritage Hub. Those programs include the Prepared Food Contracts, Kitchen Share Program, and the Farmer's Market. FNIA plans are to continue operating the Farmer's Market and the Kitchen Share Program, increasing vendor participation and memberships. Their vision for expanding the Farmer Market and Kitchen Share operations include expanding the footprint of the building, providing market produce at retail, and expanding kitchen share operations in the area. As requested, FNIA has provided their most recent quarterly financial reports for the months of October, November, and December of 2021, showing a net operating loss for the quarter. FNIA has also provided their December accounts receivables report showing $51,000 in child service food contracts being owed. On January 10, 2022, after the reviewing FNIA's financial information, the Greater Frenchtown Southside Citizens Advisory Committee recommended the CRA enter into a 10-year lease agreement rather than transferring the property to FNIA. The, the CAC also recommended that FNIA explore expansion concepts and ideas with Design Works, which FNIA has already uh, met with Design Works and have explored some expansion concepts and ideas. The CAC is recommending that the CRA board approve a 10-year lease agreement and allow staff to work out the lease terms with FNIA. This includes my presentation and I'm here to answer any questions that you may have. Excellent, thank you. Uh, questions real quick before we get to public comment. Commissioner Williams-Cox. The, um, the recommended, thank you, Mr. Chair, the recommendation for the renewal, would that keep the current lease amount um, in place so that would still be $10 per year for 10 years? Yes, ma'am. We have not indicated any increases in that. Okay. Any other questions before we move to public comment? All right, public comment. Do we have any public comment on this item? Yes, sir. On this item, we do have two speaker cards. We have Mr. Jim Bellamy followed by Mr. Uh, Mike uh, Donovan. 
Uh, your name and address for the record. If you would come to the podium, you'll have three minutes. Bellamy, good to see you, sir. Take your time. Good to be king. <laughs> <laughs> Name and address for the record, please. And as you know, uh, three minutes. Jim Bellamy, address, 532 West Georgia Street, Tallahassee, Florida. Um, I, I, I think we discussed this quite a bit. And I mean, I just want to kind of highlight a couple of things that we've done in reference we created about 50 jobs in the last five years. We also established um, a functional entrepreneurship facility. Um, I hear people keep asking uh, and the question about the expansion. We have applied for, we just sent a letter of interest back in December to the um, USDA to receive a grant that would give us $200,000 for renovation and, and fix up of our facility, which we badly need. Um, now we have 400 kids that we're feeding each day, um, lunches, FSU, FAMU, um, Kingdom Ministry. Um, we also have um, um, the, the farmer's market every Saturday. Um, which we don't make any money off of, really. People think we do, but we don't. We've been carrying that ever since we started. We hadn't intended to really make money off of the market. It was really just a kind of drawing card for people, basically. And also to give some of the entrepreneurs an opportunity to be able to start their business in our community. Um, we have um, provided um, expertise in, in, in um, consultant services at no charge to support the um, additional food access in an area that formerly was a food desert. Um, we, 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 we have done that. Um, I, 30 seconds, Mr. Billman. Yeah. I'm kind of, this morning, kind of discombobulated with this thing because, I mean, we've discussed it over and over. And I think that we have invested something like about $1.5 million in this project already ourselves. And we have about a half a million dollars worth of equipment in that building right now. And basically, um, we think that we have done what we needed to do in order to be worthy of ownership of the building. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker. Mr. Mike uh, Donovan. Mr. Chair, excuse me. We did have a speaker that wanted to speak on an item that was before this one, um, 3.02. So I'm not sure what order you would like to get those comments on the agenda. Typically, we just do the public comments at public comments on agenda items. So I'm not sure which way you'd like to handle the speaker okay. that wanted to speak on 3.02. Great. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. Your name and address Good for the morning. record, please. I'm Mike Donovan. I'm an attorney with Legal Services in North Florida and the attorney for the Florida, the Frenchtown uh, Neighborhood Improvement Association. Our address is 2119 Delta Boulevard. Um, I'm asking you today to do uh, approve both option one and either option two or option three. Option one first, the current lease expires on Monday, no matter what you agree to today, if you agree to transfer the property, it's not going to happen by Monday. And so a new lease is needed. We're fine with 10 years. If the property is transferred in that time, the lease won't be in effect anymore. I do want to emphasize what you have there in addition to what Jim said. Um, 10 years ago, this property was an eyesore. It was an abandoned building. I used to go by it all the time. Most of you probably remember it. Since then, it is now a vibrant center of this community. It is um, serving 800 to 1,000 meals every day in the middle of a food desert. That's a massive improvement over what was happening there. It uh, is providing jobs every Saturday at a food market that is, I believe, the only farmer's market that is open every Saturday of the year. 
It has people coming into Frenchtown every Saturday to come to that food market and is serving vendors that are all small businesses. The biggest improvement to that property is the kitchen share. I don't think that kitchen share gets enough publicity. Um, frankly, I don't think you get enough credit for having that kitchen share there. A couple weeks ago, I was by chance that Andrew is sitting next to a lobbyist for entrepreneurs around the state who are trying to figure out how to deal with all the food licensing requirements the state of Florida has. When I told him that Tallahassee has a fully licensed certified kitchen for any small business to use, he was amazed. <clears throat> that is serving today 24, 25 small businesses. There's been another 10 to 15 that have used it at times. I met a young woman last night that was using it to provide cookies that she's now able to provide around the community. You have done an amazing job and the French Town Association has done an amazing job with this property. What they want is more control over the property. And I heard Ms. Kim emphasize maximum control and flexibility. Right now, anything they do has to go through the normal steps of permitting or other uses and through the CRA. I want to talk very briefly the lease um, that's currently there. About 15 seconds. 15 seconds. It, it gives a lot of control to the CRA, much more control than any normal commercial lease. It, it's CR, the Frenchtown Association is required to pay for everything, insurance, improve, and um, fixing everything. That's normal. What's not normal is other provisions in the lease that we're continuing to negotiate. Thank you. Great. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. So let's, uh, let me ask, the individual that signed up to speak on the presentation from the chair of the Frenchtown Southside CRA, was it on this item? Okay, then let's go ahead and take up comment now. Your name and address, please, for the record. My name is Stanley Sims. I'm at 1320 Avondale Way. Um, I am not a student of Dr. Kim, but I am a fan. Not initially. I came to be a fan. And I wanted to publicly thank you for your leadership through some very turbulent times in regarding ethical issues pandemic issues that have last longing effect in communities of color. You have not been one of very many words, but your few words have brought us to moments like this, where you eloquently not use your position when it differs from what you are charged to do. And your position, your personal position, is eloquently explained. How am I doing? I made a promise, and I won't turn back to Mama. Tomorrow is my mama's birthday. And my point is this, is that we must rethink how we invest in communities of color. And I want to join the voices of those who thank the CRA and its board who are thinking outside of the box now 30 seconds. that has a problem that is affecting this whole community. Thank you. Thank you. We have I any forgot other my red shirt. I do have a red shirt. <laughs> do we have uh, any other speakers on this item? No, sir, we do not. All right, anybody else here want to speak on this item? Let's open it up for commission discussion. Item 6 point, uh, excuse me, 7.01. Mr. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I would... Uh, I would recommend move staff recommendation on items number one and two. Uh, the mayor pro tem has properly moved items number uh, options one and two. 
Is there a second to the motion? I'll second the motion for discussion, please. <clears throat> Seconded for discussion by Commissioner Diane Williams-Cox. Commissioner Williams-Cox. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I know that it is a recommendation of the CAC, and I know that our legal team has um, also um, provided us with information. I, I want to, though, uh, talk about if we move forward with this 10-year at $10 per year, that during that time, we look at what could possibly be done at the end of that 10 years to outright allow this building to be donated to this entity. Because by that time, what will have happened is that there have been, what, we're going on what, six years now? And then 10 years, that's 16 years, you know, um, and possibly expansion and all of that. Sweat equity has been, has been invested and will be invested in other uh, financials as well. And it's, 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 you know, it's like a lease to own, in, in, in my opinion, that if we, if we move forward with a 10-year lease, by the time, the, the, at the end of this 10 years, I think that they will have, again, proven that ownership is uh, warranted. Um, to be honest, I do not have an issue if we decided to, to do the donation now. But I do know because I know it's happened in other, other places with other, other kinds of things with stipulations. But I do hear that it seems to be the will to move forward with the 10-year extension. I can support that as well. But I just think that we don't need to lease anymore after that. We, we either need to um, grant it as a donated space, because I think they will have invested enough in it. I think they've invested enough in it right now. But, um, that we shouldn't continue with the, a, another long-term lease. Uh, Mr. Bellamy and um, Ms. Cheryl Collier-Brown and others have, have done great investment in this building, in this space, and brought life to it. Um, I don't know how much everybody knows what, what goes on there. I know many of us have had tours of it. We've seen what they've, what they've put in. We had someone come before the city commission meeting last week who apparently is not aware of what's going on there because they said that we should have a soup kitchen in Frenchtown. And when I mentioned that we do already have a kitchen share, I'm sure y'all can make soup. You're making kids meals. <laughs> you, can, you can make soup and, and give it to the neighborhood. Um, I think that we just need to embrace this as a community asset it has become. And let's, let's move forward to do good where we can, and I'm not saying we're not doing good with the, with, the, with the renewal, I'm just saying, how long, how long do we have to do this? So those are my comments. All right, any other questions or comments? Uh, Commissioner Porter and Commissioner Matlow. Thank you, Mr. Chair. You know, I, I, I have a lot of thoughts about this. I fully support FNIA. This is, uh, I'm not gonna get into it, but this is the kind of thing that I think our economic vitality dollars should be going towards. Um, whether it's purchasing a generator or, you know, so I, my concerns, which I've explained are the, the financial sustainability. And I am open to and, and you know, I'm not, I'm not sure this will make you all happy, but I'm open to in, in a year or two revisiting this if the financial sustainability is there. Um, I don't think for me it needs to be a, t a 10 year, you know, and we can't revisit this. But I do wanna set you all up for success because obviously what no one wants is there to be a donation and then there be a foreclosure and now the bank owns this building that belonged to the, you know, the public. And as you know, in general, I'm very, very hesitant ever to sell public land, to donate public land, especially without um, in some way compensating for it or replacing it. I think what y'all are doing is amazing. I think there are other ways that we can and need to support you. So it, I'm not opposed to, to revisiting this. Today though, I do feel like the, I'm more comfortable with the, 
moving forward with a lease agreement. But I'm happy to revisit this, and I want to see other ways that we can support the work you're doing. Um, and I know y'all have a lot of good people on your team who are going to help you get to that place because I think what you have is really special and it can get to a sustainable place where this will make more sense. Thank you. Commissioner Matlow. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, and first off, thank you to uh, everyone involved in the, <clears throat> the Frenchtown neighborhood um, facility. Um, the kitchen chair is great. The farmer market is great. Um, we've heard speakers today. Um, speak to really what a community asset it is, because I, I think everything, everything we do for our community isn't always about the bottom line and making money. It's what it really delivers for an area um, and the people. And I don't think um, it's outside the realm of what we've done um, even this year to donate property um, to advance um, um, something I think the whole community wanted to see. And I want to see um, this project continue to succeed. So I did, in reviewing the numbers, I can understand um, some of the hesitation, but I also see that year after year, um, you're still there. You're still making it work and, and, and you have ideas for um, how to expand and hopefully bring it into to, to profitability. So my concern with the 10-year lease is this building never gets back on the tax rolls and, and I'm not really sure what our role and it is other than to collect $10. And that to me seems a little bit um, in a holding pattern of what are we gonna do? Are we just gonna continue to do that in perpetuity or is there an exit strategy uh, for us as a CRA on, on this property and, and, and supporting them? So I do think we move forward with one. Um, their attorney said a lease needed to be um, done by Monday, but I would like to see, um, and I don't know if this could be captured in op option two, but um, what that exit strategy looks like. How, how, how does this property um, in the long term change hands? At, at the last meeting, I suggested a, um, a, a grant that could be forgivable year after year as long as they met the, mat the metrics and then at the end of 10 years, the deed can be transferred or, or whatever that agreement um, can look like. But I, I don't want to, I don't want to disenter a, a 10 year agreement um, and, and not see where we go. So I want to continue to work with the Neighborhood Association, but um, in asking Commissioner Williams Cox, um, if we brought this back, do you have a flesh out idea of, of what we should do or would you be interested in asking staff to see how they can make that work? Absolutely. Um, Mr. Chair, absolutely. And you know, as um, you and Commissioner Porter was talking, I was thinking that if we move forward with, the, with this 10 year, with a check, check in, um, you know, either annual check-in or three-year check-in to see where we are and do, do an assessment and evaluation of uh, where things are. And with all things being um, where we, wherever we, dis we, we determine it needs to be or decide it needs to be, look at the possibility of um, doing a donation at that, moment, at that, at that time. Um, I could, I could really, and if, if I, if I may, since I was a second on that, on that, on the uh, motion, uh, I could enter a substitute motion if we're interested in um, doing that, and, and if I can do that, as a, I don't know about parliamentary procedure, in that instance where I've, I've, I was a second on a motion that's on the table now. So there's a motion on the table for option one, option two, made by the mayor pro tem, seconded by <laughs> Commissioner Williams Cox. For comment, the mayor pro tem. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I, what I would like to see, and, and, and I agree with you all on that wholeheartedly, but again, I'm always reluctant, and I've said this before, to make policy on the fly. Mm -hmm. And so what I would like is for those terms to be readdressed by the CAC so that they have some input. Mm -hmm. Our attorney works with them to flush this out, and then it come back to us as a board. I don't... I don't know that there's a rush at this point to do that, uh, but I'd like to see us do it when we've got all the information that we need in front of us. Um, and so that, that would be my position. I would, I would certainly like to see the FNIA take ownership of this building at some point, but we have a fiduciary responsibility to make sure that it's done in the right way. And, and I, I think that the way that we're proposing it can be accomplished. 
uh, but I don't want to see us take that kind of action today without having the CAC give us input and also have our attorney. And I think the attorney has some remarks, Mr. Mayor, in that regard. Okay. Mr. Norville? Uh, so, Mr. Mayor, there is a statutory uh, notice requirement. So before the board could approve a purchase agreement, it has to be noticed and there would be the opportunity for the public to comment. St uh, staff would need some direction if, uh, uh, as, as far as terms of a purchase, a lease purchase, amount, timing, things like that. So. If I understand that if the will is for it to come back, that would that would probably be helpful. Otherwise, staff would need some direction today. Right. Commissioner Williams Cox. So in, with, with that in mind, um, Mayor Pro, uh, um, Vice Chair, would would you then be interested in um, approving option one, option two, so that they have a lease in place that because the lease expires on Monday. I, 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 yeah. The motion was motion options on one and two. I, I understand one and two, but okay. I'm saying, I'm thinking, should we peel one off so that we're not going into a 10-year agreement today because we're wanting some information to come back to us on the possibility of setting some benchmarks within those, Absolutely. within that 10-year period yeah, to... But, but their, their, their lease ends on Monday, so we've right. got to do something to address that. Yeah, that's, I thought that's what option two did. Okay. Uh, option, I thought option two would allow, allow there to be a, to, be, to, um, a, to, to um, provide a lease agreement, or I see it says lease purchase. Lease purchase, yes. yeah. So if we can maybe extend the lease that is currently in, in place for period of time, whatever we determine, whatever we decide you want, want that to be, while we explore more. Because I also want to keep in line with the CAC's recommendation. I don't want to negate what they have done, but I'm just saying, is there a way to do all of it? Mayor Mr. President. Mayor, I guess the question would be, um, Mr. Attorney, if we did the 10-year lease, could that be amended to, to accomplish what Commissioner Williams Cox is asking, if we if we adopted uh, option number one this morning, so Commissioner, th they've got a lease that's getting ready to expire. So right. I think that what needs to be done today is you need to extend the lease. Um, we can bring a ten. You can direct staff to go ahead and negotiate the terms of a ten-year lease, and we can bring it back. But to the extent that there's any discussion about a purchase option, that's got to be noticed and and at least my recommendation would be that that come back to you separately. Okay. But you've got, you can approve or authorize staff to negotiate the 10 year lease today, or you could just authorize a kind of a, a month by month lease extension if you want the whole package to come back. And that's not one of your listed options. Okay, so let me jump in real quick from a logistical standpoint. Uh, if it's the will of the board to actually go down this direction, talking about um, the ownership of the building. When is our next meeting, Mr. Cox? It is, um, yeah. Last Thursday. April 21st. Thank you. April. Okay. We could technically, correct me if I'm wrong, um, uh, extend the lease so that we have a legal agreement in place for Monday. Extend the lease by two or three months, or even six months, and then under a separate motion, direct staff also to go ahead and put in place the process, legal notification and everything, with the option of um, the donation of the building. Set that up where it goes to the CAC and come back. So therefore, we are meeting the obligations of the lease agreement for Monday, mm -hmm. and then on a separate track, continuing the conversation about the long-term ownership of the building. Um, did I do that correctly? Yes. <laughs> okay. What's the will of the board? Let me come back to the mayor pro tem, who's the maker of the motion. So what it, it then would the motion look like at this point? Good point. Lou, can you put us in the proper posture? <laughs> yes, Mr. Mayor. If, if I understand it, the motion would be uh, for a month-to-month -month, uh, extension of the existing lease, and just for some certainty, we could say 90 days, and then staff bring back these other options for your consideration at your April meeting. Mr. 
Mr. Okay. Cox, is that enough clarification from you from the policy standpoint? Uh, just to be clear, um, those are the only benchmarks that we're, I mean, are, are do you want us in FNIA to discuss some terms and bring, bring that back to you, or are there benchmarks that you all had in mind as far as what you wanted them to, because I know we talked about financial yes. stability. What, what benchmark would they need to meet for you all to be comfortable? In my mind, the answer to both of those questions is yes. Commissioner <laughs> okay. Matlow, on point. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. For, for me, um, it's less about the finances and it's more about the services. So me would be a commitment to continue to deliver a farmer's market and a kitchen share for 10 years. Um, and whether the, that's um, a transfer up front or a transfer in post, the agreement should um, include at least having that community, that being the benefit to the community, because that's what I'm concerned about, whether they become very profitable or not is, is less of a concern to me. Okay, are we uh, clear? Mr. Mr. Chair, Williams well, Cox. Well, I'm, I'm sorry. Mr. Williams-Cox in the maker of the motion. Okay, a quick question for clarification, because Commissioner Porter mentioned something about um, a foreclosure. Now that that building is owned by the CRA, correct? Mm -hmm. So I'm not. Sh I want to make sure that there's no possibility of that occurring, because there would be no bank loan, or if we're donating it, there would be no bank loan, right? Right. Correct. So, so there would be no chance of any foreclosure. Well, that's not. <laughs> okay, help well, me understand. If you if you transfer it to them, no, they have no debt. But if they were to do anything with the property and secure financing or whatever, then they would have the possibility of foreclosing. Okay. So, I mean, you know, just the transition of the property wouldn't, wouldn't trigger a foreclosure. Okay. I think the question before us, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem, mm -hmm. is do you want to keep your motion on the table, which is the staff recommendation for you have made option one and option two, which goes ahead and establishes the 10-year lease, or as the maker of the motion, do you want to take a step back and make a second motion or allow somebody well, to make a second motion? What would you like to do, sir? What I, my thought was that we would, I would withdraw the motion. Okay. Uh, and then we would, then I would move the motion that the attorney recommended okay. to, to move us forward. Okay. So then. So, so the first motion, I would, I would uh, uh, withdraw that motion. And I withdraw my second. Okay. okay. And then I would move, Mr. Mayor, that we, um, Adopt 90 day extended the 90 day extended lease and uh, option number two. And option number is two is that correct, Lou? Is that what we need to get us in the proper posture? So, Commissioner, if I understand the, the 90 day extension, but then the second aspect of it is staff is going to bring a proposal back to you that will include option or discussion of terms for option number two at your April meeting. Correct. Okay. Correct. I would second. All right, that's the motion. Okay, so there is a motion and a second on the table. Any further discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, passes unanimously 5 0. Okay. We are on item number 8.01, uh, the request for $297,220 CRA grant from the Short Hike LLC. Mr. Cox. Uh, Mrs. Curtis will. Uh... Curtis, good to see you again. Good to see you again. <laughs> um, the applicant, um, with your permission, the applicant would like to make a brief presentation for this item um, before staff make their comments or any other comments. Why don't we have staff introduce the item and then we'll have the presentation then we'll go into public comment. Perfect. So eight, eight, item 8.01 is Short Hike LLC, um, who has applied for a CRA medium and large redevelopment fund grant in the amount of $297,220. The funds will be used to convert the old city waterworks building into a family friendly brewery. The renovation will need approval and a certificate of appropriateness and from the uh, Tallahassee Trust for Historic Preservation to make sure that the uh, historic characteristics of the building um, are maintained. With this information, uh, the DRC has met and has reviewed the application, and the DRC has recommended approval of the $297,000 grant, along with uh, conditions that are in your agenda item. So at this time, I'll let them make their presentation. Excellent. Uh, who would like to present? Denny, good to see you. Name and address for the record, please. My name is Allison Denny. My address is 1714 Copperfield Circle, Tallahassee, Florida. Um, 
Can y'all hear me okay with the mask? Allison, why don't you go ahead and take yeah. the mask off okay. for the presentation. That'd be I fun. am not known for speaking up well. Um, I want to thank the CRA staff for their assistance in this funding application, the Downtown Redevelopment Commission for their recommendation that we receive the CRA funding, and for all of you for your commitment to growth in Tallahassee through CRA grant program. Um, we are here this morning to speak to you about the plan for the redevelopment of the Old City Waterworks property at 717 South Gadsden Street. My name is Allison Denny, um, and with me today are Marianne Sheldonstein, Tim Denny, and Tom Barrett was going to try to join us virtually. Um, we represent three of the four families of Short Hike LLC who will be doing business as Amicus Brewing Ventures. And there are also some other folks here in the crowd that came out to support us. Thank you, guys. All right, as you may know, the Old City Waterworks building sits on the corner of Gadsden and Gaines. The first well was dug in 1891, and the city bought the waterworks from a private company in 1908. The building is on the National Register for Historic Places as a, quote, visible symbol of the concern and sense of civic responsibility exhibited by many municipal governments at the turn of the century. The complex closed in 1958, and the city used the building for storage and maintenance activities until it fell into disrepair. While the city has invested significant funds and efforts to see the Waterworks property redeveloped, after 17 years, the property still remains vacant. The 2004 Downtown Community Redevelopment Plan, Section 7E, calls for continued support and restoration and for adaptive reuse to the Old City Waterworks building. Our project seeks to revitalize the space and transform it into a central gathering place rooted in the structure's historic past. We are excited about all of the work that has gone into, develop into developing in the Cascades area, and we want to be a part of it. Adaptive reuse of the Old City Waterworks building as a brewery and tap room will provide un a unique experience for people visiting the Cascades area, as well as increased food traffic to downtown. We also want to contribute to the already successful local craft brewery scene. We plan to promote a bike walk scooter trail between Old City Waterworks and other local watering holes in the vicinity. Not only will this increase traffic to the, on the beautiful Capitol Cascades Trail, this will help highlight other local breweries in the downtown and south side area and provide a fun way to get a taste of Tallahassee beers. Amicus Brewing Ventures is just the team to tackle this project. Mm -hmm. Sheldon Steam has been a home brewer for over 10 years and will run the brewery and back of house. Laura Barrett has managed teams of up to 23 staff members and multi-million dollar budgets, and she'll be running the front of the house. John York's work in web advertising technologies will be integral to our advertising and local outreach. And I'm a licensed general contractor and have owned my own construction company in Tallahassee for 17 years. And I've been working diligently on business startup and will head the renovations of the brewery as well as the business and account manager. Our vision is to revitalize the Waterworks property into a community space where friends and family can gather and spend time together. Key to our business model is the emphasis on being hyper-local. Our mo model emphasizes direct consumer sales and interaction, allowing us to focus our energy on creating a, a welcoming space for a wide range of consumers, from craft beer enthusiasts to families enjoying an afternoon in beautiful Cascades Park to out-of-town guests seeking a unique local experience. The brewery, it, with its historic taproom and beer garden, will serve as a seamless transition from the park. We will host food trucks where people can grab a bite to eat, have child-friendly snacks and games both inside and on the lawn for the whole family to enjoy. And we even hope to have a fenced-in dog area for your furry family to relax in the shade as well. Our brewery and taproom will provide a downtown destination for people outside of traditional working hours. Since the brewery development is a new venture, all jobs that will be created will be new jobs. During the startup phase, the partner families are contributing significantly with their own time and resources. Construction will be completed by at-home contractors, which is a registered women business enterprise. We also plan to hire all local subcontractors, and therefore all of the funding for this redevelopment will stay inside Tallahassee. In the first year after we open, we hope to employ four to six part-time employees with a goal of 20% employee growth each year after. Within the first five years, we'd like to start training full-time assistant brewers and service employees. At Short Hike LLC, we believe all people deserve equal rights to employment, 
and would like to utilize the Tempo program to help locate mm -hmm. trainable employees that may have been overlooked in traditional employment oh. settings. As we are articulated in our business plan, we not only want to make great beer, we want to invest and give back to the Tallahassee community. We would like to highlight local minority women and small businesses through sales of their wine snacks and host their food trucks. We also hope to host a charity, a monthly charity tap and have regular charity events throughout the year. We are not a typical real estate development team. Oops. We're not a typical real estate development team. We are a group of local families who are investing significant portions of our personal savings. We are passionate about this project and very excited to have the opportunity to restore an important piece of Tallahassee history that has been vacant for decades. We acknowledge that the CRA grant funding is a substantial financial consideration for our project. We believe that the adaptive reuse of the Wadworks property into a brewery fits squarely into the current land use designation along with objectives of the downtown redevelopment plan. We are committed to seeing this project through and turning the Amicus Brewing Ventures into a successful business. We have not wasted any time since forming our LLC in July of 2021 and will continue to maintain that focus so that we stay on track with a goal of opening the brewery in early 2023. Because we are so actively engaged across all business fronts, we believe this we are well positioned to meet our anticipated opening time. As you can see, we have done our homework in garnering public support. These are quotes from some of our letters of support that are included in our application packet from Melissa Stoller, Sean McIntyre, Elizabeth Manuel, and Bob Benton, who's a Myers Park neighbor. We very much appreciate your time and attention today for the opportunity to present our project to your, for your consideration for CRA grant funds. We look forward to the successful adaptive reuse of the old city waterworks property and preserving this important piece of Tallahassee, Tallahassee history. And you have our complete grant application if anybody has any questions for me. Before we get into public comment, do we have any questions for Ms. Denny? A quick question. Mr. Mayor Patel. Is the building, I couldn't remember if it is or not, already listed on the registry? Of it is already on the national registry. Yes. Okay. So it would be eligible for grants as a historic structure. Right. Okay. Okay, let's go into public comment. How many speakers do we have on this item? Thank you. At this time, we have one uh, speaker card on this item, Ms. Elizabeth Emanuel. Your name and address for the record. You'll have three minutes. Light will go from green to yellow to red. Excellent. Ms. Denny, thank you for your presentation. Ms. Emanuel, good to see you. Hello. Great to see you all as well. So Elizabeth Emanuel, uh, 300 West Pensacola Street, uh, CEO of the Tallahassee Downtown Improvement Authority. So uh, I just wanted to speak enthusiastically in support of this project today. They've done an excellent job highlighting a lot of these points in their presentation, um, but this request is less than 20% of their project costs. Um, this is the type of development that we should really rally behind because it's local families that have chosen to dedicate their own time and investments into this project, securing 81% of the financing necessary to move this project forward. Um, as a woman in government and business, we've now seen three women run businesses successfully open up in downtown. This would be the fourth, and I think that's an incredibly fantastic flag to fly above our community, that downtown is a place for MWSBEs to come and to thrive. I think their focus on hyper-local from the talent that they would employ um, throughout their contracting period of, of creating and construction all the way to the employees that would staff this family-friendly establishment is a huge testament to what working with local families will benefit our community by. Um, their renovations are consistent with the history of the building, which is an incredible thing. They're working with some great experts to ensure that that is taking care of every step of the way. Um, it rehabilitates an entire block of our downtown. This is something that after the beautiful Cascades development, we're seeing continued improvement and growth into other parts of our downtown community, which is exactly what the CRA wanted to have happen. The DIA wants to see this as well. Um, 
it accomplishes the TDIA mission, the CRA's mission, the Main Street's mission of um, vibrancy and hospitality in downtown. And when we've got 92% of Millstream Cascades leased out, we have to have these hospitality anchors in order to continue that and to see it grow. Oh, so this is, this is the right type of momentum. Um, they're wonderful folks and the kind that you'd like to grab a beer with. So mm -hmm. I look forward to that opportunity <laughs> very shortly. Mm -hmm. And I thank you all uh, for this. And I hear it's really good beer as well. Just <laughs> want to get that on the record. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Our next speaker, please. Our next speaker we have is Mr. Max Epstein. Name and address for the record, sir. And you'll have three minutes. Name and address. Hey, this is Max Epstein, 1001 San Luis Road. Um, I totally support the reuse of our historic buildings. Uh, I think this is a good example of a project um, that is doing the right thing. Uh, a couple things I would suggest is also to pursue a local register designation as well as the national register des designation as this is an important local site. Um, I also wanted to mention that years ago, Sean McIntyre of Capital of NAI um, sent in a letter of intent to the CRA to form a, an art community at this, at this um, site as well, whenever it was gonna be leased. So it sounds like they're looking at doing local stuff, which is good, but um, that is in there. But I also wanted to talk about for the future, um, I believe that the city has put in well over a million dollars to this building and it was sold for around 300,000 to the developer. And to your point, um, Commissioner Porter, about selling our public lands. And this is an important piece and selling it at a loss, you know, I'm not sure how that sits with me. Um, I think we need to be preserving these sorts of sites. We need to keep them with the city, public land. Of course, that has nothing to do with this. You know, this is good, a good project, but just an example of how we can use historic buildings and get outside grant funding to help with this economic development. Thanks. Thank you. <clears throat> Any other public comment on this item? We do have an additional public comment. Laura Corbett, name and address for the record, ma'am. Corbett, good to see you. Your name and address for the record, please. My name is Laura Lee Corbett. I'm at 1422 Devil's Dip. I'm speaking on behalf of what I consider very good friends, and I'm, I'm going to put wear two hats as I make um, my comments today. My first hat is as a um, Tallahassean. I've been here for several decades, and the majority of the time that I've been here, I've known all eight people who are involved in this venture. They are deeply tied to this community. As you know, they are not going anywhere, and they are investing their own funds. I'm also wearing my local hat. I've seen um, more than two decades of this uh, building deteriorating. Uh, what brought me to Tallahassee wearing my second hat is as a professional historic preservationist. I've been in the um, industry for 25 years and um, I'm thrilled to see something happen with this uh, building. As it was mentioned, it's listed on the National Register of Historic Places and it's also listed on the Leon County uh, Register of Historic Places. So. Uh, they are doing the right things. They've met uh, with the State Historic Preservation Office. Uh, we've talked with the Florida Trust for Historic Preservation and also the local Historic Preservation Officer. There are certainly federal tax credits that are available for this project. And there's currently going through um, the session as we speak now, a um, state historic tax credit that could be considered. Uh, I have personally tasted Pastor uh, Steen's beer. It is delicious. Um, and what they may seem to lack in um, experience in running a major brewery, I can tell you, I think is a breath of fresh air. Um, I also have been the um, state coordinator for the um, Florida Main Street program through the Florida Department of State. And one of the um, strategies of the Main Street program, which Tallahassee is part of the Florida Main Street program, Elizabeth Manuel just told me that they were recognized by um, Secretary of State Laurel Lee as a uh, Florida Main Street Community of the Month. Uh, but one of the strategies is historic preservation-based economic vitality. And this is certainly one of those strategies that I can tell you my 25 years of experience has certainly um, uplifted communities through using their authentic historic resources. And on a final note, as I put in my um, letter of support, the Tallahassee, uh, city of Tallahassee demonstrated its um, progressiveness when it constructed this building, right, to provide 
clean water to its citizens. So I think at this point in time, you can show how progressive you are by uh, adaptively reusing this structure. Thank you for your time. Thank you. And Ms. Corbett, if I am correct, you were also the historic preservationist on record for the Gaither House um, and did all the fine work uh, to bring it into fruition as well. So, Thank you. Our next speaker, please. Mr. Stanley Sims, name and address the record. Mr. Sims. My name is Stanley Sims. I'm at 1320 Avondale Way. In this presentation, we heard the word preservation, historic. But when we look at downtown, what is absent is people of color operating in our downtown community. What's absent, and it's not a bad project. And I don't want you to think that my comments are reflective that I'm coming against you taking advantage an opportunity that democracy affords us, because that's not what I'm doing. I'm the only man highlighting in Black History Month that we still have a problem here. And if I don't highlight it, they say silence is violence. And this is not a secret because I attend these downtown authority meetings. Prior to the pandemic, I brought the Sushine Man. We don't even have a black dude down here selling peanuts. And so we're losing ground. And so, board, I'm not standing in opposition of this. And I made this beautiful lady in the red shirt a promise. I pray Very you second. keep it, but I just want to understand Black History Month is a way of life for me. And, 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 and don't view me as the enemy. Just hear what I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment on this item? Uh, no, sir. All right, let's move to commission discussion, questions, direction. Move acceptance of um, the recommendation. Second. It's been properly moved by Commissioner Diane Williams Cox uh, for staff recommendation of approval, seconded by the Mayor Pro Tem. Any further discussion? Commissioner Matlow, Commissioner Porter, then the Mayor Pro Tem. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, this is an exciting project, you know, uh, really uh, bringing back to life uh, historic structure. And I think it checks off um, a lot of boxes that, that we, we, we've said we wanted to see as we, we moved away from these you know, mega block developments and really get focused on um, locally owned and community based um, projects, um, as well as adaptive reuse and trying to preserve um, existing structures. Um, I had an opportunity to, to, to review all the numbers. I, I found them to be um, um, pretty, pretty conservative, actually. And, and so I think uh, uh, financially, it looks like the project will be in good shape, and I'm happy to support it. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Commissioner Porter. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I really enjoyed meeting with you all, and I'm really excited for this project. I'm really excited to, I live just down the street, so I'm excited to see what it does to continue to revitalize that area, and I loved hearing the ideas you had for once you're a little bit more established, having food trucks, having events, and I think that that's, that's gonna be a really, really, great amenity and of course to make it even better I mean restoring that structure um, maintaining that history so I'm just really excited to support this project and to see um, your success be our success thank you mayor pro Tim thank you mr. mayor I, I guess uh, Commissioner Porter will be able to ride her scooter <laughs> <laughs> But I, too, want to uh, express my support. When young ladies came to my office to talk to me about this, I got excited even then. 
uh, because of all of the all of what this brings. I, I mean, local talent, uh, hometown folk who have decided to stay in the community and uh, invest personally uh, in the community, uh, as as uh, Commissioner uh, uh, Matlow mentioned. I mean, it just checks off so many boxes of what we're trying to accomplish. The historic preservation aspect of it, certainly. But the 18-hour downtown that we've been trying to achieve for years now, it adds to that. It adds to the walkability and connecting uh, points of interest in that area, Cascades Park, Smoky Hollow, the uh, John G. Riley House, uh, and all of the other uh, points of interest that we have in that corridor and in our downtown. And also, what was, what was important to me was the family-friendly nature. Uh, I, you know, I didn't know that you could uh, have families in breweries. I just found that out. And I understand that Proof is doing it as well as some of the other breweries, but that makes it even more important. And then when I see the rendering of what it would look like, it's just phenomenal. And so I'm, I'm looking forward to it and certainly uh, support it wholeheartedly. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Commissioner Williams-Cox. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. I, too, am um, happy to see this happening. I think that this is what what private public partnerships look like. Yes. You came to the table with the lion's share of the funding needed to do this. You're just asking uh, for public participation in a, in, in, in a, a small amount. So uh, I too was, was happy to meet with you all. And uh, I, along with Elizabeth, I get real excited when I see uh, women working together to create some synergy because it sends a signal to our little girls <laughs> that we can work together and we can be um, entrepreneurs and we can we can do a lot of things. So I, I like the message that is being sent and I hope that we continue to do that as we grow our community. And I, I like the synergy that's being developed in that part of our city. Mm -hmm. um, I have some other ideas that I'd like to see things happening in that area as well we'll that will I'll fold out later, not today. But um, thank you for coming to the table with some money and with a small ass. <laughs> Ms. Denny, quick question, if you don't mind. I know that when we met, and I'm sure that you addressed this as well with uh, my colleagues when you met with them, the original request was construction withdrawals, but the recommendation today is for CO. Right. Are you comfortable with the recommendation today, or would you like for us to have a conversation? I can't guarantee that anybody would be in favor of that, but I just know that was the conversation that we had. You're right. So we um, have been working with our bank because this mo this money is designated for construction funds. So for us, it made sense for it to be in a construction draw process, um, and that's why we asked it that way. It is still our preferred way to work with the money. Um, otherwise, it takes some. Um, maneuvering of baskets of money in order to, if we, if it all comes at the end and then it gets applied to construction, all of that construction cost has already incurred. Um, so that is why we originally asked for the funds to be dispersed through a construction draw process. Okay, thank you. Uh, Reverend Steen, you are no stranger to these chambers. You've given the invocation at city commission meetings. We certainly do appreciate that. Uh, by public testimony, uh, everybody says your beer is absolutely fantastic. <laughs> will, will the pastor's pale ale be a staple at the brewery? Uh oh It's a question uh, to be asked. Okay, great. Um, so the motion on the table is for option number one. Any further discussion? Any further comment? Okay, seeing none. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those approve. I mean, uh, all those against, say no. You had that beer already? No. <laughs> we're saving it. We're saving it. For, saving it for three o'clock. <laughs> Try this again. All those in favor of the motion on the table, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. Passes unanimously. Five zero. Yes, the motion was made. Excuse me, by Commissioner Diane Williams Cox, seconded by the Mayor Pro Tem. We're on item number 8.02, the request for agreement amendment to the Fairmont Development LLC grant agreement for Washington Square project located at 227 South Calhoun Street. Mr. Cox. <clears throat> Mr. Chair, uh, if you don't mind, um, before uh, Ms. Sheila Williams uh, gives her, uh, her presentation, um, staff has revised our uh, recommendation. Okay. Uh, we are seeking board direction uh, from you all in regards to this uh, matter. So, um, Sheila, if you don't mind, 
um, after she gives a presentation, um, if the developer and his uh, attorney wouldn't mind coming up so that um, if the board has any questions, uh, we can, uh, you're available to answer. All right, thank you very much. This is agenda item number 8.02, request, request for agreement amendment to the Fairmont Development LLC grant agreement for the Washington Square project located at 227 South Calhoun Street. On Monday, February 7th, 2022, the property owner developer, Mr. Kent McDermott with Fairmont Development LLC, requested that the project completion deadline be extended from March 8th, 2022 for an additional 30 months until September 8th, 2024 for the proposed Washington Square project located at 227 South Calhoun Street. The executed agreement number 4215 indicated that the development was to include a full service hotel operating under the Lowe's banner, which would contain 270 rooms, 17,000 square feet of meeting and event space, a finished outdoor space, class A office space, a lounge and three restaurants, and 425 space structured parking garage. The property owner indicated the request for extension of the agreement is because of anticipated <coughs> events outside of their or his control, which delayed the completion of construction. He further indicated that the events were the disagreement regarding the East Garage easement and the COVID pandemic. Because of these events, Mr. McDermott indicated that financing became unavailable and the property owner was unable to meet the original construction schedule. Upon staff's receipt of the email from Mr. McDermott, Sierra A staff requested additional and supplemental information from the developer by a date certain which was Friday, February 11th at close of business. The request for additional information was in order to prepare an applicable agenda item with information and for staff to conduct an appropriate review to provide the CRA staff recommended disposition to the CRA board. There were four items requested from the CRA staff to Mr. Kent McDermott with Fairmont Development LLC. That was a request for a signed letter from the developer reassuring that their agreement terms will be as previously proposed, specifically calling out page one and page two and the agreement 4215 that the development would adhere to A through D. Additionally, the second item was the request for a project and construction timeline. Item number three was a signed letter of interest from an applicable investor and finally, a signed letter or report from a structural engineer regarding the integrity of the current improvements in structure. The afternoon of February 11, 2022, Mr. McDermott indicated he was unable to provide the four requested items at that time. Staff did go ahead and move forward with preparing the staff agenda item without the requested supplemental and additional information. We subsequently received an attempt to address the four items this past Tuesday, Tuesday, February 22nd, 2022. That information has subsequently been provided to the CRA board, and I would like to enter those into the record as exhibit number A and exhibit number B. We would like to also mention that according to the Florida Department of State Division of Corporations, www.sunbiz.org, that Fairmont Development 8 LLC was voluntarily dissolved by Mr. Kent McDermott on March 31st, 2022. The current exec ex executed development agreement is between the City of Tallahassee Community Redevelopment Agency, the CRA, and the dissolved Fairmont Development LLC, which uh, dependent upon the disposition, disposition by this body that may require some action or some type of modification between us, Mr. McDermott and the attorneys. This agenda item was reviewed by the city attorney's office and resource management. Staff again did originally have a staff recommendation in your agenda packets that was provided to you seven days before this meeting as option number two to do not approve the request or agreement amendment to the Fair Cloth Development LLC grant agreement for Washington Square project located at 227 South Calhoun Street 
which was prior to the receipt of the attempt to submit response. Albeit, the CRA has the discretion to select option number one, which is to approve the request for the agreement amendment to the Fairmont Development LLC grant agreement for Washington Square Project located at 227 Cal South Calhoun Street. You have the option to approve option number two. Do not approve the request for the agreement amendment to the Fairmont Development LLC grant agreement for Washington Square Project located at 227 South Calhoun, which was prior to the receipt of the attempt to submit the response and or you have the option for option number three, which is board direction. As mentioned, Mr. Kent McDermott and his team are here along with myself and the rest of the staff and the CRA attorney to answer any questions that you may have at this time. And thank you. Thank you, Mr. McDermott. We do look forward to hearing from you and your team in a second. First of all, this is a major shift from uh, recommending against to a board direction. So Mr. Norvell, please walk us through the current recommendation. Well, Mr. Mayor, if I understand that the the staff recommendation is for board direction, so they're they're asking for for the board's uh, direction on this. As I understand it from Mr. McDermott, uh, the developer's position is that that the reasons for the delay were not solely uh, their responsibility. The contract does recognize that they're entitled to an extension if the cause of the delay is not solely within their control. So speaking to Mr. McDermott and his attorney, the ask is that this would be a one-time uh, extension if the board is going to entertain it. Uh, I'd also like Mr. McDermott to, to clarify that, that we don't expect that this is going to be a continuing loop and they will not be coming in and asking for additional extensions short of an act of God or a hurricane or something like that. So again, it is the uh, developers contention that the cause of the delay is not solely within their control and they're they're asking that the that the board then recognize the extension Can you touch on the point of the dissolvement so that is something that the truth be told we have not analyzed and we would either need to we will work with them if the board is inclined to grant the extension that they can either reinstate their entity or we could look at a potential assignment to another developer entity with all the uh, obligations of the existing contract then potentially being assigned. But truth be told, that's not something that we've analyzed. So um, this is a very legal technical yeah. issue. So Lou, we're going to need you. None of us are attorneys. We're going to need your help on this one. Mr. Phelps, just out of curiosity, not to put you on the spot. Mm -hmm. um, did you all at the downtown DRC have an opportunity to discuss what is the sentiment? What's the conversation? in regards to Washington Square. Did you discuss this item in particular? We did not. So our last okay. uh, right. downtown meeting was February 1st, uh, and this came, I believe, in on February 7th. Okay. So an email was circulated with this coming out. We did, of course, have it come in front of us for another request earlier, uh, but not this specific extension. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, Mr. McDermott, would you and your team like to? But Mr. Mayor, while they're sure. coming, can I ask a quick question? Of over course. Your Mayor Pro Tem. So, Lou, so, so since uh, the uh, LLC has been dissolved, is there still is there still an agreement? Or, I mean, who do we have an agreement with? Well, so the agreement is with the development entity. Now, again, there's a prospect, and, and I don't know here if they could reinstate this this entity or if there could be an assignment. In theory, even this dissolved entity has an existence or it could be rev revived and then assigned somewhere else. I mean, it's just, it's an issue that we have not looked at, okay. but the dissolution is not going to be an absolute termination. Okay, all right. Mr. McDermott. Thank you. you have the floor. Thank you. And uh, Curtis, the, the LLC that we dissolved was owned by my wife and I, and okay. the other LLC, Fairmont Tallahassee, which actually owns the real estate, is okay. owned by my wife and I. And all of the other agreements that we have, we have easements and various other agreements with the city, they are all with the, the owner of the land. So okay. the actual development company that I set up became superfluous, uh, it never had a bank account, it never functioned in any viable okay. way. How it actually got a name, I'm, I'm not sure, but basically we have really good news um, to report on the project uh, because... So, so, so we, we do have a legal entity that we are in contract with. 
Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted. Yeah, it's to be nothing clear has on that. changed. It's still my wife and I. Okay. My wife <laughs> there came with me for the meeting today. I told her how much, <laughs> actually, how much I learn, and I enjoy being at the meetings because okay. there's always something. There. All right. But, thank you. Yeah. But at any rate, um, we're, we are very grateful, as you know, for your support. Um, your support has been an, an important part of the uh, financial performa that we have given to our investors and our and our banks, and so um, the fact that we are now able to keep that going forward, um, and uh, in spite of the pandemic, still have your support uh, makes a big uh, a big difference because we don't have to go back to the banks and investors redo all the financial performance, etc. Um, but, but the good news is this, we're starting the project up again. After this meeting, I'm meeting with our uh, masonry contractor. We're going to be going back uh, to, to construction on the site. And <clears throat> the actual timeline Mike Fiorito is going to be giving me today. Um, what we'll be starting with first is doing the waterproofing of the foundation and then backfilling uh, to stabilize the shoring and the site, uh, the site will be cleaning up, and then after the, after the actual stabilization is completed, we'll be able to restart construction. So uh, we're moving forward uh, very substantially, uh, hopefully less than a million dollars additional cash I'm going to be putting in here in the next weeks and months, uh, but a, a very significant additional uh, investment on my part in the project as we wrap up our uh, final plan to restart the building vertically. And um, if there are any questions, uh, I'd love to answer them. But we're very excited about where it's going now. So I've got a question. Uh, when, do, when can we expect construction to begin? Not stabilization, but construction. Well, that's going to happen probably by summer, John. It's going to take that much time just to get all the backfill in place. It's 27, you know, 2,700 yards of backfill that has to be put in there. And that is done one bucket at a time with a crane. It's a very slow process. I have not had an opportunity to review the documentation that was provided yesterday, and I do apologize. So can you walk me through? Who is the letter of intent from your, from your investor? Well, I, I am the sole investor now. I don't have, I can't, they're non-disclosure agreements. And, and that's just an issue that I can't give their names. Um, I can assure you that, um, I'm not sure if everybody on the commission will, but I'm pretty darn sure that many of you will know the name of the, uh, the hotel developer uh, that is going to be involved with us in the project. Um, you know, he's a Florida hotel owner and, and, and developer and operator, actually. So, but it's just at this point, it's not something that... Uh, do you have a signed agreement with the Lowe's banner? No, Lowe's Hotel will not be managing the hotel. And, and Lowe's, is, is, Lowe's was my financial partner, and as you know, they, they went away uh, some time ago. And they were making a very substantial addition. When that, when that money went away, it made a real issue. Other questions, comments? Commissioner are, Matlow. Are there any public speakers? Or are we just going to have this conversation before the public speaks? Actually, that's a good point. Do we have public comment on this item? I have no speaker cards on this item. All right, we took care of that. There we go. Commissioner Matlow. Okay. Um, moving forward with the project, is that dependent on an agreement with the site parking garage? Oh, absolutely. We have that agreement in place. And uh, the, the back of house for the hotel and parking for employees, 150 employees to operate this. Um, that's all been handled, it's behind us, and we're very, very happy that it's there. The project would not be nearly the scale that it is if that hadn't actually been put in place. So we, we've come to a, an agreement on what that access is, or are we still in dispute? Oh, no, no, uh, no, no. If no. my recollection serves me properly, that was the big contention was based on access to that parking garage and the ability to move forward. So my question is, are, it, are we accepting what the city and CRA's position was and what that agreement said, or is that gonna still be in dispute moving forward to be able to construct? Every, everything is resolved. 
As far as I'm concerned, the city relationships with us are terrific. We've, we've met with the engineering staff a number of times, uh, my geotechnical engineer, uh, Artemis Associates, uh, had, and I had a conversation with them just a week ago. Again, they've been very much a part of our getting the job back started up again, and um, the cooperation that we've been getting from growth management has been wonderful and is very much appreciated. And uh, so I, I personally feel that the city is doing everything they can to support us. And that's okay. I want to Mr. Williams Cox. Oh, I'm, oh, I'm sorry, uh, Mr. Matlow. I didn't know you were. And it, from investors, you have interest from investors, a commitment, or a signed agreement? A commitment. A commitment, okay. Uh, that's the name. Mr. Mallow. Uh, that's it. Great. Commissioner Williams Cox. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. McDermott, I'm, based on what I'm reading here, you were asked for some items by February 11th. You were not able to provide those items? My engineer, um, Walter P. Moore in Tampa, um, they were not able to respond with the report by the deadline. So uh, when we find the day that I got the report from them, I submitted the letter so, and the report to the CRA. Okay, so what have, what's been happening with the project since the last board meeting? We've been working with Mike Fiorito. It's a very complicated process. And first of all, he has to finish up his work on the Mormon temple. Get, which is wrapping up his portion of that project, start ours. But getting this organized and with the crane set up, everything that needs to be done is, is in process, and that's what's been happening. So, I, 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 you know, let me be very transparent. We just discussed um, the, a, a building that a community really needs. And they're having to do some extra things to prove that they can sustain it. You have had years to do some things downtown with that building. We've been sued. We've been ridiculed. We've been put to shame about the hole in the middle of downtown. And today you're asking for 30 months. You can give birth to an elephant in 24 months. But you've asked for 30 months almost an eternity when you look at when this all started. When this all started, I wasn't even on the commission. I wasn't even on the board. And I'll just tell you that I have been very disappointed. And then today you're asking us to trust you because you haven't provided us with the documentation um, that was asked for. So that we can't check that box. Well, you have it. They have it. Yeah, we have it. He, he turned it in. It was okay. just late. It okay. was late, but it's in. Okay, late. I haven't seen it. Um, so I don't have it. When you were here before, we again talked about the, the lack of interest in doing any more than what had already been done. I know that the uh, Code Enforcement Board reviewed it. It was on their agenda the other night, and they took, they're taking action. You have fines that have piled up. So in my mind, this project is not, it has not been, it is not an ideal project. And I could not be a good steward of the public dollars to continue to trust a process that hasn't proven that we're gonna get somewhere soon, or you know, 30 months. That's a long time. So can you convince me that it is in the best interest of our community to continue to work with you on this particular project? Yes, yes Commissioner, I understand your concerns. And I can assure you that it's been much more difficult on, on me and my family than Ken, any, could you talk anyone into else. The, could you talk into the, mic the mic than, than, than anyone else? Uh, the, you, you mentioned public funds. Uh, we have never asked for public funds. There are no public funds committed to this. The way that our agreement with the CRA works is that after we've com completed the project and we have uh, taxes that are being paid and employees that are being paid and a vital business in town, after I pay my taxes, 45 days after that, the city will 
reimbursed to me a portion of the taxes that I've just gained, just given. I, I understand so that a, part. So but, it's no, there's no public funds. It's but money have I have spent, to give we the have city. spent public dollars defending ourselves in in court. But that we're, I, I hope that we don't have to revisit issues that are long past, and and please they are past. Uh, let's look to the future. The fact that the job is starting up. Uh, th this is a. We can't we can't hear you, Mr. McDermott. I'm sorry. <clears throat> this is a very unusual time for the hotel hospitality industry. Uh, if you were in a resort uh, town, a hotel would would be back and operating almost normally. We have a business town. This is a business hotel. Uh, there are a whole lot of concerns in businesses about having conventions, meetings, et cetera. So I can assure you it is not an easy sell uh, for any of us, for, for me, to convince a hotel operator to open up in any business city. You've got hotels in New York, San Francisco, London, all of the big business cities that are still under the water. And uh, the fact that we're being able to go back forward to the project is really a testament to one, that Tallahassee is a wonderful city, two, that the state of Florida is a fast growing state that people want to be a part of. So thank God I'm here uh, doing this uh, because um, in most cities, there wouldn't be financing for this project. And uh, so, Thank you, in Mr. Order McDermott. For, I, I, don't, I don't want to monopolize all of the time, yeah, but thank no, you. No, but, but, but you basically, any other questions? your support has made a big difference. That's... Commissioner Mallow? Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm, no matter which way we go on this, we have a, we have a half-built project in the middle of our downtown. Um, it, to me, it would require a bit of a, of a faith walk to actually see this move forward just based on history and what we've seen, um, whether investors, investors are committed or whether you know, they've actually signed those agreement, that's completely unknown to us right now. But I don't know if 30 months changes that really one way or the other, but I, I would be clear if we granted an extension today, I think a request for another extension would be, it would be very reasonable to deny another extension post that point. Understood completely. Okay. Um, then then I, considering I, I'm not sure what happens if, if we say no, we just continue to have that vacant thing. Um, I'm willing to give the opportunity to, to, to see if you can deliver. Um, and th this is our first major decision on it because we haven't come out out of pocket, we were we, we refused to um, give money for the backfilling and those sorts of things because we're all we're all uh, we're not confident. Um, you know, we we've seen this play out. The whole community watched it, and they're asking, "What's happening downtown? What's going to happen to that spot? Um, how do we get here?" And there's a lot of unanswered questions um, for that. So, so I guess I, I'm just asking you, if we do a 30 month extension, is this going to be built? Yes, sir. Absolutely. Uh, um, Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I guess the question as a follow-up to Commissioner Williams Cox, Ken, how do you, Mr. McDermott, I'm sorry, how do you intend to address the issue of the fines that are accruing based on the code violation? It will be addressed. You know, we'll, we'll address it and we will we'll deal with it. I mean, basically there was no way with the virus for construction to continue. Mm -hmm. And I think that the people in the city have been very caring and reasonable, and I believe that it will be resolved. Okay, we're we're going to trust that that happens as well, because I think uh, certainly you owe that to the city of Tallahassee and to the taxpayers of this community, and I certainly would like to see that happen. So in light of that, Mr. Mayor, I would move option is it number one to grant the extension. Uh, there is a motion on the table to grant the extension uh, that has been made by the mayor yeah, pro tem. Is there, a, is there a second to the motion? Second. There's a second to the motion. I'm going to weigh in real quick as well. Uh, there's. Give me two seconds. Hold on. Mr. McDermott, I know that we're not putting tax dollars in on the front end. 
but this does represent the largest investment in the history of the downtown um, uh, CRA. So this is significant to us. Yes, sir. Uh, even though it's tax credits on the back end not to exceed up to $9.6 million, this is very important to us. Yes, sir. I will support the motion on the table if uh, we can have a conversation and possibly amend the motion with a few caveats, because I agree. I need a little bit more. Um, I'm, not, I'm not quite ready to go on the complete faith walk. Number one, I want to see construction begin in six months. Period. Yes, sir. Not stabilization. I want construction. I want, to, I want to see it go up. So if we start on March 1, you're talking about September. I want to see construction out there. Number two, I want proof that you can completely finance this project. Yes, sir. Okay? Yes, sir. By September 1. I don't think that's asking too much. <laughs> if we're going to put nearly $10 million on the back end, prove to us that you're going to be able to pay for it, and it's going to be done. Number three, I want all fines paid by September 1 as well. I think that's pretty reasonable. I, so I would love to hear from my colleagues. I would be more than willing to support the extension, the 30-month extension, under the caveat, number one, this community sees construction no later than September 1. And again, not the stabilization, but construction going up. Number two, all fines are paid to the city of Tallahassee. And number three, proof of financing that we're going to be able to finish the project. Okay. I, I would accept that as a friendly amendment if you'd like, uh, it can, uh, with the understanding that these are going to be hard and fast timelines. Yes, sir. If you'd like to offer it that way, sure. I'd accept it as a friendly amendment. I yes, like, I, I like. Okay, so now we've got a discussion. Let's go, Commissioner Williams Cox. I saw Commissioner Porter and then Commissioner Matla in that order. Okay, I, I, I like to weigh in on that. I like those caveats. I can, yes. I can accept those. I don't like the 30 months. I think that we need to uh, reduce that to 24 months, two years, with an annual check in, at least, of where we are and where things are. I don't want to be surprised by the paper one morning showing the crane still there and everybody gone. So we, we, we've had years. So I would like to see it 12 months. I mean, uh, 24 months instead of 30 months. And I'd also like to make sure that there will be participation in this project by minority and women-owned businesses as a part of, of this. And I will offer up not that I can, but I'll mention it. I know somebody's listening. Tempo participants as well, as we're doing with other community projects, that they too be in play for, for this. And that there are other community benefits that will be provided as a result of this grace that is being granted to be identified by the um, CRA staff based on other community benefit agreements that we have. So those are things that I would like to, I guess, add to the, to the friendly amendment or however we want to deal with it. But those are the things that, that will help me get there. Otherwise, I cannot support it. Okay. Commissioner Porter, then Commissioner Matlow. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I have a question for either Mr. Norvell or Mr. Cox. Because a lot's going on. Can you just... Taking a step back, so what had what changed between your recommendation to to board direction? The the letter that we received. Yes, okay. we, we received uh, some of the documentation that we asked for. Um, okay. And based on that, I wanted uh, the board to weigh in on what their feeling was um, okay. because without that information, I just you know we didn't think as staff that. Um, it was right. Okay. I just wanted to confirm there wasn't anything else I was missing. Mm -hmm. And what happens if in 30 months there, I mean, to me, it would be a miracle and having nothing to do with you. If something at this magnitude is completed in 30 months, I mean, what happens if it's not completed in 30 months, what happens to our agreement then? And we, and we don't decide to grant an extension. And Mr. Mayor, I'm happy to answer that. Sure. So if, if the developer cannot comply with the terms of the contract and that condition is, uh, and, and I would need clarification if we're talking about a 24-month or a 30-month extension, 
But if, if there's not compliance with the contract, then the obligation of the CRA to provide the incentive funding would cease, the agreement would actually terminate in the absence of an extension. Okay. So if they cannot comply with the agreement, it would release CRA from any obligation. It would, okay. It would essentially terminate the agreement. Okay, thank you. Okay, Commissioner Matlow. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I agree with the financing uh, confirmed by, by the investors within within six months and, and to clear up the fines. Um, I wanted to ask Mr. McDermott, um, the project that's moving forward are going to be the same as the existing permits. You'll be able to start construction within six months. Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, that's all I need to know. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Would your attorney like to comment on the terms that we've proposed? And, and the 24 months. Absolutely, and, and thank you for the opportunity. And to if speak. you could introduce yourself, then absolutely, great. Jim McKee, on behalf of the law firm of Foley and Lardner, uh, here with Mr. McDermott. The the point I want to touch on first is the existing contract between the, the CRA and the LLC. It, what it provides is that the the contract completion date, and I think that's important to know as well. What we're talking about an extension for is the actual contract completion date, yes, not the not the, the not the date to start the contract or, or start construction. It provides that such period shall be extended for events of delay for which developer is not solely responsible. The way I look, when I look at that language, the way that I interpret that is if you have something, for example, COVID, a pandemic, um, that has caused the delay that we're experiencing here, there is no need for a request for extension. Uh, there, is, there is no need for, uh, for, for any, any new, uh, uh, basically, contingencies. Per the language of the contract, Mr. McDermott is entitled to an extension. It's an automatic extension. It's essentially a force majeure clause, which, you know, which appears often in contracts. If there's an act of God, a pandemic, a war, uh, a hurricane, anything that actually causes the delay, it's a delay not caused by Mr. McDermott, it's, it's broader factors, <coughs> he is entitled to the extension. Uh, and I think that's important to keep in mind as we're, as we're talking about the motion. Uh, with respect to the 24 months, uh, Mr. McDermott can speak to that better than I can, but you know, certainly a, a project of that size takes quite a bit of time to complete. Um, I, I don't think we want to set him up for failure. Um, you know, certainly the, the, the CRA, I think, has been, uh, has, the proposal is, is, is good, at least the initial proposal was good, um, but I don't think we want to set him up uh, in a no-win situation. I'll turn it back over to Mr. McDermott. Understood. And let me just comment real quick. Look, my personal opinion in layman terms, we get to 24 months and you're rocking and rolling and cranking and you got two or three more floors to put on play, I don't think that you're going to have any problem with an extension from this board. No. What this community wants to see is progress. I mean, that's the bottom line. That's why I think what's crucial is the next six months, not necessarily on the back end. I mean, I'm more than happy to go with my colleague with 24 months because I think we all agree that if, if, you are, if you're there, then we're, we're definitely going to be there. I, I want to see progress in the next six months. Um, I will agree with you on the COVID aspect. I disagree with you wholeheartedly, though, on the parking aspect. That was foreseen. That should have been taken into consideration. We're not going to rehash that, but because that was officially mentioned in the documentation that was sent, I just want to go on the record and say that. Uh, Mr. Chair, if I add one more yes, thing. There was another project going on nearby that managed to complete during COVID. So, uh, you know, I'm not in anybody's, uh, I don't know what anybody's finances are, but there was progress made downtown nearby during COVID. Right. Okay, so, so Mr. Chairman, uh, I would like to add then sure. the recommendation by uh, uh, Commissioner Williams Cox as another friendly amendment, the 24 month extension as a second friendly amendment to the motion. Okay, so I think that what we have on the table is a motion to extend, not 30, but 24 months. Right. Um, but I also think we've made ourselves clear that if you are up and running and running hard and we need to readdress that on the tail end close to 20, we will, okay? But we also want to see proof of financing for the entirety of the project. Mm -hmm. We want to see the fines paid, and we want to see some type of construction, not stabilization, but construction within the next six months. Are these reasonable terms in your... And, and Mr. Chair, Excuse me. minority yes, and women, um, small business participation, tempo co uh, participation, and other community benefits as defined by the CRA board, uh, by the CRA staff and board. Mr. Mr. Maker of the motion, and let me come down to Norville. 
Mr. Mayor, there, there's a provision in here for that they meet with the MWB office. So I think that's yeah. already built into the agreement. Okay. Uh, we can build in this uh, tempo is this this youth program that uh, we can let you all see the, the terms okay. of it, try to work with our tempo and employ some tempo people if that would be acceptable. If I understand that would be the additional uh, condition. If I can clarify, Mr. Mayor, as well, that is the board direction that if the board approves this extension, that staff will negotiate these terms and then execute the document with, and it's not coming back to you. I just wanted to clarify that. Correct. I would be good with that. Okay. Mr. McDermott, in good faith, the motion now on the table. What are your thoughts? Oh, I agree to it. I think it would be, I very much appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any further comment? Seen none. Motion on the table is made by the mayor pro tem, seconded by Commissioner Williams Cox. No, seconded by. Uh, it's a second. Excuse me, yeah, seconded by Commissioner. I'm okay with the motion. Seconded by Commissioner Matlow. Excellent. All those in favor of the motion on the table, signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, passes 5 0. Excellent. Thank, Thank you very much. much. All right. We are on item number 9.01, the discussion of TLH Arts Incorporated Tourist Development Tax Funding. Mr. Cox. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> Ms. Williams will. Uh, Present this item. Ms. Williams. Right. Thank you. Uh, this is agenda item number 9.01, the discussion on TLH Arts Inc. Source Development Tax Funding. This agenda seeks board direction regarding the TLH Arts Inc. project utilizing the TDT funds in response to the information received from the re representative. Per the Fourth Amendment to the Interlocal Agreement governing the creation and operations of the CRAs in downtown district, the use of or the non-use of CRA-managed tourist development tax art grant funding must, must be recommended by the CRA and approved by both the Leon County Board of Commissioners and the City of Tallahassee Commissioners. In your agenda item, um, there was information regarding the chronological information regarding this item in your agenda packets. Uh, TLH Arts was provided with the draft agreement mid to late 2021. The draft agreement had not been executed. We've had um, some staff changes. So current staff did follow up with uh, the representative of Mr. Jake, Mr. Jake Kiker for TLH Arts regarding the status of the project and the, uh, the document, the execution of the draft agreement. Um, he indicated that uh, TLH Arts had temporarily placed its work and plans for the Railroad Square facility on hold in order to direct its immediate focus to expedite efforts to further explore and support this opportunity, and specifically at the invitation of the Sheridan Center leadership to direct, to directly engage and pursue formalization of a community partnership. Uh, the Sheridan Center is in the Northwest Center and is not located in the CRA district, and it cannot receive CRA-administered funds under the existing interlocal agreement with Leon County. On February 16, 2022, staff did have a discussion with the TLH Arts, Inc. representative, Mr. Jake Kiker, who understands and is amenable to the CRA board, a city commission, and the county commission rescinding the $1.8 million grant award. Uh, the next steps would be further discussion and recommendation between the CRA board, city commission, county commission uh, will be necessary to extend, change the process regarding the TLH Arts Inc. project and the tourist development tax dollar funding. This agreement item, agenda item, uh, was reviewed by the city attorney's office and resource management Staff in the agenda packet had two options listed. Options number one was to rescind the grant award to TLH Arts for the construction of the performing arts venue at Railroad Square, or option number two, board direction. And staff, along with the representative, Mr. Jake Kiker for TLH Arts Inc., uh, are amenable to and are recommending options number one resend the grant fund award to TLH Arts for construction of a performing arts venue in Railroad Square. Mr. Jake Kiker is here along with staff and the attorney and the executive director to answer any questions or concerns you may have. We do have a number of speakers on this item, um, including Mr. Jake Kiker. Okay, we'll go to public comment in two seconds. 
Let me just make sure that, uh, Mr. Norvell, we're all on the same page. Okay, so this is the three-legged stool. It requires the vote from the city, the county, and the CRA. I'm assuming this is the first stop on that train? So, yes, Mr. Mayor. So, CRA administers the grant, right, right, right. and here the first step would be to recognize the rescission of this grant money, which all it really does is put it back in the pot. Correct. And, and that's all that's, that's being asked to be done. Any further steps as far as amending the interlocal agreement or changing the way the money can be used would, revire, would require the city and the county's uh, involvement. What about the rescission of the grant? At this point, CRA is administering the grant. You can recognize the rescission today. As I understand it, it's voluntary and recognized uh, by TLA charts as well. They have not uh, executed the agreement, so there's not an agreement in place. It's just the board would recognize the rescission. Okay, well, that takes city and county action as well. No. Okay. So, by the fact that we have people here supporting another performing arts initiative that's going through, I am assuming that there's going to be a request uh, to possibly rededicate this funding towards another performing arts venue, okay? Mm -hmm. So what I'm understanding is the recommendation today is simply to rescind the official agreement to TLA charge for Railroad Square. There is no direction to move forward unless that comes out of a discussion amongst the city commission. Is that a separate motion? So one motion to rescind, one motion for direction? And then that second motion for direction would then have to be approved by the county and by the city. Is that correct? So certainly for any further uh, allocation of the funds or, or dedication of the funds, it's going to require city and county. It's probably cleaner because if you need to rec if you want to rescind the grant, you need to just recognize that it's probably cleaner to do that in, a, in, in one motion, and then you can discuss the further direction separately. Right. Okay, sounds great. Mr. Chair. Uh, yes, ma'am. Commissioner Williams-Cox. Um, hearing what, what the uh, attorney just said, I would like to... Uh, request that I have the opportunity to make that motion to rescind. Sure. Because, you know, when we discussed it before, I was the dissenting vote at that time. And so I would sure. like to make sure I'll that come to you first we after it, public comment. Bring it, bring it in for landing. I'm coming to you first. <laughs> okay. So, uh, Mr. Kiker, you kick off our public comment section. Your name and address for the record? Sure. It's uh, Jake Kiker. Three minutes. Two, uh, 222 Oakland Avenue, uh, Tallahassee, Florida, 32301. Uh, first of all, thank you for your time. Uh, obviously, I'll be very brief because I know you all have a very, very long day, and hopefully this will be the least contentious part of it. Um, thank you, uh, Attorney Norvell, for working with us with staff and the new Director Cox. Uh, we understand the procedural nature of what needs to happen here. Um, I want to make very clear that TLH Arts has never been in a position, nor do we take the position today, that this is our money. Um, the, these were dollars that were collected for performing arts in this community. Um, obviously, you all as the elected are charged with, with how that you know, happens going forward. Uh, the $1.8 million question, which we've been asked continuously between the press and other folks, is what happens with the 1.8 now, and our response is, we don't know. Um, that'll be up to you all. Um, our hope is that strong consideration would be given to uh, the amendment for the IA agreement to allow it to go to Northwood. Um, obviously, any decision is going to have to go between the city and the county in any event, so we'll be dealing with the exact same bodies. Um, but again, that'll be for you all. Um, I will say, and I want to reiterate, it's been in the press already, um, the Sheridans and the Sheridan Center folks could not have been more gracious. This was an active invitation that they reached out. Um, our groups are working collaboratively. We, we recognize that what they're doing on the facility side, we think matches up very well with what we want to do on the programmatic side, especially as it relates to uh, diverse groups, more inclusive groups, and bringing the city and the performing arts communities together. So we think that these puzzle pieces fit together very well. Um, but certainly that'll be up for, for you all. And the one thing we will not be doing in this instance is uh, creating anything along the lines of what happened last time around. This is something that we want to see. Again, no, no divisiveness, bringing the community together and, and putting forth the project that the city and the county deserve. Um, and we think the Sheridans have, have taken the reins on that. We look forward to working with them and supporting that. Excellent. Thank you. All right, let's go through public comment. How many speakers do we have today? Oh, I think about eight on this item. Okay. So um, we have Mr. Michael Sheridan, followed by Mr. Whitfield Leland, followed by Ms. Kathleen Shepherd. Shepherd. Mr. Sheridan, your name and address for the record. Mr. Sheridan, please join us. Sheridan, good to see you as well. <coughs> Can I take my mask off? <coughs> please. Thank you. Michael Sheridan, 535 Woodfern Court. I'm with my wife, Judy, who uh, is also at the same address. 
Wouldn't you like to state that for us? <laughs> As of today. <laughs> uh, so Judy is the chair of the foundation and the board for the Sheridan Center, and I'm the vice chair. She is our official spokesman. But uh, uh, since I've been dealing with this for the 19 years since it's been since the city and the county approved this under the cultural plan and was the chair of COCA back then, it was decided that uh, why don't I go ahead and take one more shot at it, uh, which is what I want to do. I appreciate what uh, uh, Mr. Kiker has said, and uh, all that kind of originated with us having a conversation. Um, do you want to own a building, or you want to find a place to put all these programs together? Is we want to put the place the programs together. Well, we had come up with our idea after he had started and had received your grant ready. So. Uh, um, they're going to be an important part. DLH Arts is going to be an important part of what we do in the future. Uh, just like there are so many other groups, and when Kathleen Spihar, of, uh, Executive Director of COCA, comes up and talks about the most recent survey that we just sent out, we got a very good response. Uh, we'll talk about there's a lot of interest in getting this thing off the ground. So where we are, kind of putting it in perspective, I want to add a couple more things. We're not going to be, the, the center is not presenting the performances. That's called programming. The various groups that are going to be part of our arts center, arts community, are going to be doing the performances, determining what plays they want. We're going to have an oversight board to make sure that they are compatible with good taste and all the rest of that. And I don't want to define what good taste is because I don't know what it is anymore, uh, reading the newspaper. But we're building the building and we're going to maintain it. And to put it in perspective, the city, we're asking the city to donate a piece of property that is right in the middle of the four quadrants of the city. Not in the northeast, not in the south, not in the west, but right in the middle. That's what we need. And it's got the size of the land. It's the ideal piece of land for us. We're going to, the cities, I, I, I don't know how you can figure out exactly how much you paid for that land. It's around five million. It's worth maybe a million. We're putting up nine. We've got commitments for nine million. Six is in the bank. We got their other commitments. We can't move with the other people that we think want to contribute to this until we have a site. We have a design, and we can tell them how many square feet it's going to be, et cetera. We've got to wait for the city. Now, we've been dealing with city officials and meeting with folks in agreements for five months in March when your next commission meeting is. We want a decision then. We want to put this in perspective. We want to move forward. We think we can do it all and do it well. Thank you. Thank we want to raise more money for this. I need you to bring it in for Landon. Commissioner Diane Williams Cox pointed out at the last meeting, we want more stress on diversity, equity, inclusion. Yes. We want to kind of try to build in classrooms and other small conference rooms yes. so we can promote those kinds of teaching opportunities. And we will. We're going to need some more money. We've got to go out Thank and raise you. some more money. Yes, but we'll sir. do it. But we need your help to get it finished. Thank you, Mr. Sheridan. Appreciate it. Your name and address for the record, please. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Judy Sheridan, 535 Woodfern Court. Excellent. And what we'd like to do is ask the CRA to consider uh, the Sheridan Center and give us an opportunity of um, coming back after we have more information on what we can do and um, to be eligible for the funds. Thank Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sheridan. Thank you. Our next speaker, please. We have Mr. Whitfield Leland, followed by Ms. Kathleen Beer, Mr. Max Epstein, followed by Yazabel Rodriguez. All right. Your name and, uh, name and address for the record, please. Whitfield Leland, 754 West 7th Avenue, um, Tallahassee, Florida. I'm standing here today. Um, it's amazing how um, God works. Um, we was just here. Um, a while ago, arguing about this $1.8 million and where and what it could do. Um, a lot of us felt it cheated when TLA charts got awarded. Um, but 
God saw fit for it to come back to the table. Um, once we found out as a community um, that this was back on the table, um, we collectively have been talking. And you was right, uh, Mayor Daly. <laughs> it is some request that's coming behind it. But I do think that the request that's coming behind it made, are going to be made collectively. Um, and DABA, I think uh, the French Star Cat team um, has been talking and they're in agreement um, um, to make a pitch for the money. I also uh, want us to look at two, um, Terrence <laughs> McCray who uh, does something with, uh, has a, a performing arts kind of theater that they are uh, umbrella up under the lamp lighters. Like we can do a lot with um, this $1.8 million. And these three organizations can actually network and bring, bring themselves together to provide services for each other um, together. So. I'm going to ask that, I don't know the process, I don't know if we want to really open it back up, but I'm going to ask from on um, a community standpoint that we actually, um, if we have to do it in a workshop setting or however we have to do it, let's put these people at the table and let's see what they come up with and let's see the direction that the community wants to go with with this money and instead of asking the CRA staff for direction, let's ask the CRA staff to give direction after the community gives direction on what they want to see with this money. Thank you. Y'all have a nice day. Thank you. Our next speaker, please. Ms. Kathleen, followed by Mr. Max Epstein, followed by Yazabel Rodriguez. Name Wonderful. Address Your for the name and address for the record, please. Uh, good morning. Uh, this is Kathleen Spihar, um, 2414 Dozier Drive. And I'm coming to you today as the executive director of COCA. It's all great to see all of you, and I've really appreciated today's discussion. Um, let me just clarify something that um, I, I, COCA is working with the Sheridans on collecting a lot of information from the community. So we do have a survey that we have uh, we've put out to the community. Uh, I'm also going out into, and uh, talking to different arts leaders, especially from the South Side. And I'm also um, working with, a, with the um, other uh, city staff, especially Ashley Edwards about the Smith Williams place. So there's a lot of discussion like that that's, that's going on. So let me just clarify that. That's, I'm gonna talk about something else this morning though with you, um, but I'm happy to take questions if, as you see fit. Um, so uh, we, uh, we at, the Co at COCA um, have a, uh, a statement that we just wanted to make sure that we shared with you. And uh, this is from the COCA board. So COCA appreciates the continued commitment of the CRA in building arts and culture to our community because arts, um, artists, arts organizations and art businesses have really positively contributed to the reemergence of our community and the uh, impact from the impact of the pandemic and continue to promote Leanne County as a tourist destination. So this particular agenda item at number nine addresses the use of that $1.8 million originally allocated to TLH Arts Incorporated, which was a project that would have invested in our arts and culture industry. So as the CRA board reconsiders how best to use this resource to meet community needs, the COCA Board of Directors supports reinvesting the $1.8 million in other projects that directly support the arts and culture industry and continue to drive Leon County's growth as a destination city. And so we want to thank you for your consideration. Please know that we're always a partner with the city, with the county, with this community and what it decides. And we just re really appreciate the continued support to building arts and culture in our community. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker, please. Mr. Max Epstein, followed by Ms. Yazabel Rodriguez, followed by Ms. Donna Cottrell. Name and address for the record, please. Hey, this is Max Epstein, 1001 San Luis Road. And I'm gonna come back here and say the same thing that I did when this money came back last year. Um, we need to establish an actual grant process um, through COCA would be the best um, entity to do so. They have a grants manager, someone who does this sort of administration um, professionally. And I also think that the remaining 1.8 million should be split between the French town and Southside um, CRA. I know they're one district, but they are geographically separate. That money can be used for lots of different programs. And we can think of a lot of ways to spend that money to have the maximum amount of impact. Um, 
I do think that an Ashmore's type project, an art center in Frenchtown is important. And I would hope that these two projects could be developed in coordination with the Sheraton project to have satellite installations in different geographic <coughs> areas. Um, Commissioner Williams Cox, I know that you talked about having a south side center. That is absolutely needed. There were two applications in the original 2018 um, proposal for south side arts centers. And then we had um, former Mayor uh, Dot Eamon Johnson who had a same, the same type of project. But what has to happen, again, I think this money should be split and designated for these geographic areas, but then let COCA take over. Have an actual grant process so we're not coming up here and the, the community is fighting with one another. We need an actual process. Um, and you know, so far, this board has funded the number one, Lemoyne, the number three, TLH Arts, and they even funded the Challenger Center, which applied in 2018. But number two, Frenchtown, has not gotten the money. So I will just wrap up by saying that. It's important to split the money geographically, um, establish a real grant application and review process because that's how we got here in the first place. It's been four years with a project that didn't have the financial support. It didn't have what would take to finish it. It's another instance where we should not have been in this situation in the first place. But now is an opportunity to do something good with the money and reach more people. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker, please. Ms. Yazabel Rodriguez, followed by Ms. Donna Cottrell, followed by Ms. Shauna Smith, and then finally, Mr. Stanley Sim. All right. Thank you for joining us. Your name and address for the record, please. My name is Isabella Rodriguez, and I live at 1505 West Tharp Street. I do have some proposals for you, if I can provide that. Uh, who mm -hmm. should I? Hello all, my name is Isabella and I am with Tallahassee Exchange in representation of Indaba uh, as their consultant. And so it seems like a lot of what some of the community have been speaking on is the need for collaboration, the need for diversity, and the need to invest back into our city. Now, as a representative of Indaba, I can definitely say that they are working towards these goals and truly hope to encapsulate them in what they do. So I would like to propose that some of this money does go towards build, building out their art center in the south side at the, um, at the railroad village. So some of the projects that align well with the goals that you have set out at the CRA, uh, with encouraging quality education, they hope to further their educational programming for youth at promise, along with those who have suffered from domestic violence and encouraging them in the theater and art world to express themselves in a constructive manner. In addition to that, they also have the encouragement of mental health advocacy and overcoming trauma in the past, which lines well with your promotion of healthy community. They also have sponsored the arts in their murals and in the productions that they have put on. And in addition to that, they have provided beautification projects in the area to encourage an investment from the community to the community in beautifying the South Side. In addition to that, they are also in support of Youth at Promise currently working with government agencies to help sponsor them, and they have also opened a mentorship program. Now, I do believe in collaboration and connection, so with the other groups and other neighborhoods that have spoken today, we are definitely open with to talking with them more and we want to encourage the arts in all realms of life. So this is not meant to be a limiting process, but it is an introduction to what these lovely ladies will speak on as women founders, as women with voices that need to be heard from communities that need to be represented. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Our next speaker. Ms. Donna Cottrell, followed by Shauna Smith, followed and finally by Mr. Stanley Sims.
Thank you for joining us. Your name and address for the record, please. Thank you for having us. Uh, my name is Donna Pearl Cotterell. I live on Osceola Street. Uh, my business partner, Shauna Smith, is coming behind me. She's speaking after me, and I'm so glad to have her beside me. We are both Southside residents. Indaba Theater and Associates is a BIPOC and women-led nonprofit organization. Our mission is to inspire, empower, uplift, and to create healthy outlets of self-expression using theater as therapy. We will bring tourism development through our tri-state relationships that we have with Cotton Hall Theater in Colquitt, Georgia, as well as the Opera House in Dothan, Alabama. They both have made significant contributions to our organization and have invited us to participate in their tri-state theater festival in November. This gives us an opportunity to promote our performances to a wider audience within driving distance of our center. We are within the CRA district, therefore eligible for funding um, targeted for the South Side. We have a wonderful relationship with the Ashmore Project. Our two projects combined bring arts, culture, and cultural heritage to the two areas not represented by the Lemoyne uh, funding uh, for uh, tourism. We are the recipient of theater style seating that was donated by the Challenger Center and it was delivered by Mad Dog Construction. We are in need of having those chairs installed. There's 108 chairs, so you can imagine um, it's gonna cost a little bit to get those installed, but we look forward to you know, having that space be a true theater space with wonderful theater seats in there. Our mural garden is supported by funds from Leon County's Neighborhood Garden Grant. It needs to be um, graded. But right now, that's kind of lumpy bumpy. Um, so that we can make it accessible to all and have a wonderful outdoor seating space. Our children's program is, is supported by Reebok. Our property owner has donated $10,000 in in-kind improvements to the space. Donations have come in from across the state in support of our grand opening. And the city too has funded our performances um, in the past. We are a hub in support of local artists like Ayoka Drumming, Kia Atkinson, April Fitzgerald, Carly Sinaduri, Kenny McGuire, Somo Arts, the Artist Workshop, as well as a diverse group of artists and performers residing here in our city. We recommend that you take up consideration to fund Indaba Theater and Associates, as well as the Ashmore Project, with the Cultural Arts, Heritage, and Tourism Grant that will be rescinded from TLH Arts. This will also support Full -time, three to three full-time equivalent jobs and many more job opportunities as we expand and grow on the South Side. Thank you. Thank you. Professor Smith, good to see you. Your name and address for the Professor record, Smith. please. Ooh. Okay, retired Professor Smith. I'm Shauna Smith. My address is 814 Apache Street. And I want to speak to you on behalf of my new in retirement partnership that I'm so excited about to have reconnected with a good family friend who's come back to town after having established her nonprofit of very similar nature up in Massachusetts. And we met up and we like, she wanted this, you know, and I'm like, wow, we really need this on the South Side. And as someone who is originally from Tallahassee, grew up on the South Side, still live on the South Side, and seeing the lack of opportunity for artistic expression, having spaces to do that. I mean, even, I think I was in one theater production, and that was through Florida a and University, and at that time, it was mainly professors' kids that were being invited to come and, and do this, and it was wonderful, but it was obviously very limiting. The ballet classes I had to take, I had to go across town and take them from Miss Patsy the one white instructor who was willing to teach African American children, but we had to be trans, you know, we had to go over there to her. She got shut down because she wanted to be able to teach African American kids ballet. Some of you probably don't know that, and you're from Tallahassee. She got shut down because she wanted to continue to teach. And I believe, if I'm right, Ms. Patsy is. Clifton Lewis's daughter, is that, am I right? I think, anyway, local family done really wonderful stuff uh, here in town. And after, I've also been a part of the neighborhood leadership academies here in town, and it's really surprised me that when we come and do our Southside visit day, of which maybe three of us are minorities in this group, 
and we bring these generally Caucasian brothers, and they come to this, oh, I didn't know all of this was over here. What? What? I mean, you know, look at all the potential is here. And they were floored. These are lifelong residents who've been here who had no clue. No clue. And, you know, thank goodness for FAMU Way and some other things that have advanced the area. Thank goodness for the Ashmore Project that's trying to bring some more interest to this side of town. Most of them never come past Tennessee Street unless it's to go to a football game or to pass by going to the airport and maybe the mall. And that's not really why we're here doing this. Not, that's not why I wanted to connect with Donna and I was happy to have that opportunity. We need this. Not only the South Side needs this, Tallahassee needs this. We need to be able to afford opportunities for healing and artistic expression, community involvement, engagement across the city. Do we want them to come to the South Side Jail? Yes. Look at all of this and come and feel comfortable and be okay? Yes. Do we want our kids to be have walking distance stuff that's not exclusive to where your parents are professors or, or who they work for? Make it affordable. Make it creative, and not just kids either, the community, the elderly. We want to have some storytelling. I don't know where I am on time. Is that, that mean I'm done? Okay. Yes, ma'am. But anyway, I'm Shauna Smith. Thank you for any consideration. We're within Dava Theater of Florida and Associates. We do have a space down at Railroad Village, and we'd appreciate any support. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker. Last and final speaker that I have on agenda items is Mr. Stanley Sims. Name and address for the record, please. My name is Stanley Sims, and just like Sharon's, my wife stays at the same address that I do. I look at this in a more of a holistic manner, and the premise in which I look at the anatomy of homicide. The Sheratons has presented this community with the outlining blessing that is hard to be ignored. One that has been crying in this community year after year. From 38,000 square feet, one would think that money would push you to the front of the line. Well, it does if you're going to apply it in the right way. Because of the commitment and the accessibility that Ms. Kathleen and Coca has had to all of this community gives us a good chance to capitalize on this family's investment to better. And to highlight again Ms. Kathleen's role in this, to bring two agencies together to do so is tremendous. I'm not one to muddy the water unless I see it beneficial. So I'm not going to muddy this water. But what I do see is three eloquent claims that needs investment. Ms. Shauna brought something to my attention that I forgot. I remember they shutting that lady down. Ms. Ms. True Blood daughter used to go to her for ballet. That's the only black girl I've known that took ballet. I thought that was for white people. That was my frame of thinking back then. That's why there's such a need for Mr. Sheraton's facility that brings structure. Does all that money go to them? But they need to get at least about a million because just like we told Washington Square, it's essential that the people see something go up. I believe it's essential in the arts community that the people see something go up. Tomorrow is my mom's birthday when I was in prison, Mr. Sherrington. All I had to send my mama for birthday was a 
picture that my cellmate three down the road had drawn. My Mr. mama Sam, still holds that. To conclude your comments. On seconds. her wall today. That's how important art is to our community. Sims, thank you so much. We do have one additional speaker, um, Mayor, and we have Miss Beverly Williams. Your name and address for the record, please, and you'll have three minutes. Hi, Beverly Williams, co-chair of the Frenchtown Cat Team. I was oh, 923 Old Bainbridge Road. I represent the Tallahassee Urban League on the Frenchtown Cat Team. I was not going to speak to you, but I could not let Stanley end the meeting without me saying something. So uh, I just want to say that I think this is an excellent opportunity for the community uh, organizations to get a staff at this money. So the CAT team's recommendation is that you resend it, put it back in the pot, and give us an opportunity to apply for it. Thank you. If you have any questions, thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker. That is all the speaker cards that I have on agenda items, sir. All right, Commissioner Williams Cock, coming back to you. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chair. Um, I would like to uh, um, make the motion that we accept option number one and option number two. And in regards to option number two, uh, board direction, I would ask that we. Um, do reinstitute the application process, and that uh, because these are tourist development dollars, not performing art dollars, that there are other high-end uses that can be considered as well. Uh, Mr. Cox, could you share with us what some of those uses are in addition to the performing arts? Uh, culture, visual arts, heritage, and convention center. Those are all eligible. Yep. So those project. things would drive tourists, it's supposed to drive tourists here. And so with that direction that we reinstitute the application process and that the grant application um, committee that is currently established with the Tourist Development Council receive those applications and evaluate them. There is a process already in place. I would second that motion. All right, there's a motion Mr. on the Chairman. table that we accept option number one and provide direction that the uh, money goes back to the Tourist Development Council grant application process. Not the money. The, the, the money stays in CRA, but that the Tourist Development Council grant review committee will accept those applications <laughs> and review them and evaluate them. <laughs> Understood. Commissioner Porter. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just have a, a couple of questions and comments. So who, orig I know this has been a years long process. Who evaluated the last time around? Was it the Tourist Development Council? Okay, so they performed that function. And it- That's, that's incorrect. We had a body that was comprised of- Take your mask off so we can hear Sherry, you may have to help my recall. Um, I think that's incorrect because for this process, the CRA did drive that application process and the members that were comprised for evaluation of the applications included uh, downtown representatives and various other uh, people. I know for sure for my development review commission and I believe we probably had a, a CAC um, member representative too as for the greater Frenchtown South Side. Okay, that, that's what I, Thought. Um, okay, so sh Sherry, you're nodding your head. Okay, and so the C and look, I don't. I'm not trying to. I don't really have a huge opinion on that. I'm just trying to gain clarity on kind of who evaluated that. And so there was a process, and the CRA does evaluate these kinds of things. And so that could happen again without it going back to. I mean, the the Tourist Development Council. Is that correct? I'm not trying to nitpick. I'm just trying to, you know. And Mr. Mayor, I can sure Lou. respond. Uh, so, Commissioner, the the agreement uh, identifies CRA as administering the grant and making a recommendation. 
it sets out some criteria as to what it can be used for. And under the current agreement, it's limited to be used in it, being used in a CRA district. Okay. Um, it doesn't specify the selection process. Correct. So last go round, CRA did set up a selection committee, which had a number of representatives. And then and those, uh, that committee then made recommendations that came back to CRA. And then the project were approved by city and county as well. But the agreement does not specify the selection process. Okay. Okay. Th thank you so much. I would probably be more comfortable if we just continued, you know, with that process in the CRA as, as we had done it. But I, I too think that we need to go back to the drawing board, open up an application cycle for this. And I'm not sure, you know, what kind of discretion y'all were using before as far as different funding amounts, but my personal preference just for discussion is that we have a couple of funding levels available so that it's not just and again, you know, for discussion and the discretion of the people who are making the evaluation, you know, I think that it's good to see maybe a million dollars and then some 100,000 or 50,000. You know, there's different groups that can take advantage of different levels. If we want a big bang for the buck and one group gets 1.8, we can discuss that. But I think it's good to have some options for smaller groups to take advantage of, of those funding opportunities. But otherwise, I'm, I'm supportive of, you know, I think I'm on the same page with what's been said. Thank you. So Commissioner Williams-Cox, let me see if I can help bring this in for landing because this is gonna be the vote that uh, requires both the city, which is us, and the mm -hmm. county to agree. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think what I'm hearing is that the majority of the board is interested in sending this back to a process. <clears throat> Um, to be reevaluated, allow people to apply and move forward. Would it make sense to provide direction to the executive director of the CRA, city manager, and the county administrator to come up with uh, uh, several recommendations uh, to send to all three bodies? I'm, I'm trying to avoid the back and forth. We right, agree, right. you disagree, and everything. Right. So maybe if we had the three administrators sit down together that can then bring recommendations to us on what that application process would look like. Uh, I mean, I tend to agree that it's TDC dollars originally, yeah. but, but I'm open to any and all suggestions okay. on how to streamline and make the process efficient. Does that make sense? It does. And TDC, as you know, is a county committee. We have two representatives on that committee. There are other community committees, uh, I mean, uh, members from, from throughout the city. What I don't want to have happen is I don't want us to spend another six years putting a committee together to do an evaluation. Yeah, I agree. These dollars should have already been used years ago. So I want those dollars to go back into the community ASAP. And so if we can go ahead and use uh, something that's already in place yeah. that, is, uh, that know, knows about these dollars because they came from them. Correct and has some, uh, for lack of a better term, bipartisan agreement, <laughs> because we got to see it in the county already there, right. and other community um, participation, that we could expedite getting this into the community. Right. So, and I don't want, again, let me just say, I, I, I could do it with the, with the county administrator, the city manager, and the executive director, but I don't want this to become caught up, up here. I want it to be handled right here so that it can get into the community. I agree. And so what I think we're discussing is what is the most efficient way to handle it right here versus up here? I yeah. think we're all on the same page. Yeah. We just need to figure out what the direction of the motion would be. Do you want to specify in your motion a particular organization, which is basically we're planting the flag, mm -hmm. and I'm sure the city would ratify that because that's us. But if the county disagrees, then we're right back. Or do you want to see if we can head that off by getting recommendations? I do want to try to head that off. And I did make, make a motion with board with the recommended direction of using the TDC. TDC. Okay. And I got a second. So that is my, that is my That's motion. motion on the table. Okay. That sounds good. Any other comment? Commissioner Matlow. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Commissioner Porter. Coke is also a part of that. What I... I guess my concern is when we went down this path 
before, <laughs> then the committees and the recommendations didn't really matter, and we ended up somewhere else. And we ended up there again, because ultimately, um, uh, the political leaders are going to make the final decision. So I, I want to make sure we're going down a path where everybody is, is in agreement. I think what we went through just with TLA charts and the back and forth, none of us want to go through that uh, ever again. And I think expanding to the TDC, now we're bringing in a fourth entity uh, to try to get different projects through. And that seems like it's, it's more complicated. I would prefer if we were to administer the grants as the CRA, have the CRA receive applications, have the Frenchtown and Southside CAC teams be part of the scoring committees. And, and uh, since we're trying to keep those dollars within um, the, the, the CRA um, boundaries and then uh, make a decision. And then I would also say, I don't know how inclined our county colleagues are to go through this process again, but ask them to just let us make the decision. Mm -hmm. Do we need to go back and forth? Or are they also wanting to see this money get put out into our community and let's not play a drawn out years game of your, your board meeting, our board meeting, TDC board meeting, city board meeting, and just say, we wanna get this out to arts, culture, um, and tourism and, and, and have us make the decision. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Porter. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I was wondering if you could clarify what you were saying about getting the, the city manager, the county administrator, and Mr. Cox together. Like, what would that look like as a motion? What so, have in mind? whatever the final direction is, it will need to be approved by three governing bodies. CRA, Cox's RED, City of Tallahassee, uh, Reese Code, then the County Commission. I agree with Commissioner uh, uh, Williams Cox that I don't want this back and forth for years, and I no. think that's what Commissioner Matlow was getting to as well. So, what is the easiest way to get recommendations uh, to figure out what the three governing bodies want to do? So, the motion on the table is to go ahead and vote to send it back to the TDC. It was originally, tourist development tax dollars that were collected. They had the original process in place. They do have a citizens advisory committee that would be involved as well. So that's what the motion is. My mm -hmm. suggestion is, all right, so if we take that and the county says, yep, nope, we're not doing that, then we're back to square one. Does it make sense to get the three administrators together to then have them on the same page of what that process is and make the recommendations to their body? I mean, it takes one half dozen of the other. I, I do intend to support the motion on the table uh, and, and see where we go from there. I don't know if we have the... Sure, sure, okay, thank you. I mean, I'll reiterate, I think the, CR, the CRA has a process. They've implement. I mean, they do this. I, I'm not gonna nitpick, I'll support the motion, but I, I do feel like just sticking with what we did. They do this all the time. Um, not that the DDC doesn't, but I'll support the motion. I'm not going to make it a sticking point, but I, that would definitely be my preference. One point. Uh, yes, ma'am. Thank you, Commissioner uh, Porter. Um, the, the, the only reason I'm saying that is because it's dealing with tourism, yes. and these are tourism yes. dollars. These, these dollars are supposed to get heads and beds, yes. and so that's, that's the charge of that agency. Um, and I don't want us to get bogged down in one way thinking that it has to be this way or this way. We need to, they need to be able to look at it across the board and have, have everyone who wants to apply be able to apply, whether they're uh, dealing with the arts or they're dealing with some other things, museums or whatever that may bring tourism to Tallahassee. That's the goal of these dollars. Excellent. Right, Motion is on the table for option number one, which is to officially rescind and, the and offer two. to TLA charts. And, and option number two, which is the recommendation to... Um, go back to the Tourist Development Council's process, application, uh, uh, application process um, for the, the disbursement of the money. Which and, and I would assume, Mr. Mayor, that that would be done as expeditiously, expeditiously as, possible, as possible, that it wouldn't, we're not going to be, we're not going to stretch this out another six months or eight months, or, but that it be done as quickly as possible. Commissioner Matlow. Just on point, uh, uh, Mr. Norvell, 
going for us to get the TDC to rank the applications. That doesn't have to go through the county because ultimately we have to make a recommendation for the county. So we could ask them to make recommendations that would come back to the CRA and that recommendation would get sent to the county so or do we need to send the process to the county? You don't have to send the process. So CRA administers the, the grants and makes a recommendation. You do need city and county approval for the ultimate award. But if I understand the, the proposal, the motion that's on the table is that you'll utilize this TDC right. process to rank or make uh, some, some proposals, they will then come back to you for you to approve the recommendations, and then you will send them to city and the county as, as the CRA's recommendations for the grant awards. Okay, so it doesn't, wouldn't require the city manager or the county. Let's it, do it. I'm that was, I was mistaken then. I thought that the city manager, that this particular step does not need to be ratified by the city or the county. It does, this selection process for the recommendations does not require the city or county approval, but just recognizing that the city and county are gonna ultimately have to approve the awards. Okay, got it. All right, so motion on the table uh, is for option number one and option number two is defined, made by Commissioner Diane Williams-Cox, seconded by the Mayor Pro Tem. See no further discussion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, passes unanimously, five, zero. Do we have any other business to come before us today? No, sir. All right, we're on uh, public comment on non-agenda items. We have any speakers today? At this time, I do have one speaker. We have one speaker, Ms. Jacqueline Perkins. Name and address for the record, and you have three minutes. Ms. Perkins, thank you for joining us and staying through the entire meeting. We appreciate it. My name is Jacqueline Perkins. My address is at 3437 Blue Jay Drive at 1618 Key Street, Tallahassee. Before I present my concerns, I want to express my appreciation to all of you for the various forms of condolences you extended during a difficult period for me and my family. I'm also grateful for your unremitting support of the street name change in recognition of the historic and impactful actions of my parents. Most of you know that I've stood here at this podium on many occasions to advocate for positive and transformational change in this community. On almost every occasion, I've been in lockstep with you and I've spoken favorably and passionately in support of your proposed actions. However, that is not the case today. I'm here to direct your attention to three words that begin with the letter P, policies, procedures, and process. While I'm very concerned about the CRA's recent actions to undermine the group, working to save a historic building in the bond community, my three minute time limit will not allow me to address that particular issue right now. I will be back to present facts and ask this board to assess those actions to determine if they align with your policies, procedures, and processes. I'm also here to direct your attention to two more P words, personal pain. That's been caused by the actions of one of your grantee organization. My family wants to know if the CRA has a policy regarding the placement and use of images and promotional packages developed and distributed by your grantees. If so, what is that policy? What are the procedures and what is the process? Does the CRA require the grantee to obtain permission from the person whose image or picture is placed in their promotional ads? If the image is in the public domain, should the grantee ascertain the family's position on the use of their loved one's image? If the person is deceased, does someone need to get permission from their family before placing this ad or placing their picture in an ad? I ask these questions because a very personal photograph of a couple at a 1954 FAMU High Prom was used in an ad for the Soul of the Southside Festival. These people had no involvement in this event. I know because the beautiful woman in the picture, Bertie L. Chester Jefferson, was the baby sister and the only sister of my mother, Trudy Chester Perkins. She was at the prom with her soon-to-be husband, Clarence Jefferson. This image was placed in ads on Facebook and other platforms while we were still grieving the loss of family members. Please indulge me, give me, I'm closing. My aunt and uncle's only son, my cousin Alvin, suffered an aneurysm on Mother's Day. He left us to be with the Lord on May 13th. We had his funeral on May 22nd. Ironically, that was the last day of this festival. It was painful for our family to be viewing an image that no one in their family authorized to be used in an ad. And on behalf of my cousins who asked me to come here and my deceased family members, we implore you to remove their image from any and all current and future promotions. Do it because our pain is real. Do it because it's right. 
Thank you. And I have some of these here. This is my aunt and my uncle. And their picture was all over the place. And it hurt us. Because we buried their only son. And you all already know what losses I've incurred. So I'm asking you, if you have a policy, look at it. If you don't, develop one. Ms. Perkins, have you talked to the organizers of... I don't know who they... I don't know who the organization... I'm coming here because you all are the board. I'm talking about policies, process, procedures. Some people talked about process to this afternoon. It's your policy. Um, and I ask for you sure. to please ask people to consider what they're doing to others because in the promotion of an event, that's the only purpose it was used for that I can see. None of my family members had anything to do with this. Sure. And there was a, uh, and lastly, I want to say that just recently, I think an ad was being recirculated. And my cousin's son, who's in uh, Miami, said, why are they still using this picture of my grandparents? Sure. So I'm just asking you all to please take a look at it. This is not, I'm not on a, uh, a war path. I'm on the path to trying to gain understanding. Ms. Perkins will be more than happy okay. to, number one, speak directly with Seoul Southside and get the picture removed. As for the policy question, I, that's, that's a legal issue, and I'm going to ask Ms. Norvell to personally work with you okay. and bring it up. I, I, don't, I don't know if any and of Mr. us have an Mr. answer off the top of our heads of what the legal aspects of using... And, and Mr. Chair, did, is that something that, was that something that was produced by the CRA? No. Okay. I said the grantees. No. And I'm asking if the CRA even reviews what your grantee organizations put together. Sure. If you don't, then I'm asking I, you to do that. Sure. The attorney Thank says, you. so if you could, uh, um, and, and we don't have to do it now, but if you'll follow up with Ms. Perkins, that'd be great. Yes, sir. Excellent. Do you have a copy of the flyer so that? Give it, so you don't have that'd to walk all the way up here. Give it to, give it to Sherry. Okay. Do we have any other speakers on non-agenda items? No, sir. All right. We're on commission discussion. Uh, Commissioner Porter? I don't have anything to add. I just want to say to Ms. Perkins that I'm, I'm so sorry about that. I don't think any of us would want that. That's got to be terrible, and I'm, I'm just sorry, and we'll, we'll make sure we, we do something about it. Thank you. Commissioner Williams-Cox? Um, I thought Ms. Perkins and um, Mr. Hollinger were here to talk about Robinson's store. But I do know that we need to, we're going to need to have that discussion um, in the very near future because I, I need to have some clarity on where we are with that. And um, uh, Mr. Cox, I know you're you're prepared to talk about it at, at, at the next meeting. Okay, at our next meeting. Okay. Excellent, Commissioner Matlow. Well, let's go do this stadium thing. I'm, I'm not the president for this board. Mayor Pratt, I don't have anything. I don't either. We stand adjourned. <laughs>